attempts in control attempts in the brain. We do not attempt to adjust your device screen. We are in control of the broadcast. We control the horizontal. We control the vertical. The time has come. Please stand by for a live transmission from Halloween Daily News. Yes, yes, light up those pumpkins, everybody, because we are live. Let's see who else is awake and alive out there tonight. Hello, Haddonfield, and happy Michael Myers Monday. Welcome to it. If you're new here, my name is Matt. We are Halloween Daily News, and this slasher-filled shindig that you just found yourself in the middle of is what we like to call Michael Myers Monday Live our hangout and celebration of the greatest horror franchise of all time and our hangout with the greatest fan community on the internet. So welcome. And that brings me to our returning friends. What's up, everybody? Happy Michael Myers Monday. You made it. We all made it through another week, through another Monday. We are here. We have made it through a month's worth of Michael Myers Mondays and Michael Myers March, and it has been epic, has it not? We've had some amazing guests on here, and we're going to keep that going tonight. In just a minute, I'm going to bring Dominic on here, but I wanted to get on here and welcome everybody. Um, I see we've got some members already checking in, like Rob, and uh, I saw Andromeda, and of course Patrick is in the house as well, some of our channel members, just $5 a month, guys. Um, I see Megan checked in early. Of course, David Suber here helping um, moderate as needed. Mike Johnston in the house as well. Jenny in the house. What's up? Happy Michael Myers Monday. Tim Leo, Byron. Awesome, awesome. Good to see everybody in here. And I saw, yes, Brian. Uh, some uh, new blood. We love to see it, Brian. Welcome. Happy Michael Myers Monday. Here's to you, sir. Thank you for hanging out. Phil is here hanging out as well. Josh Baker videos. Awesome. Cool. All right. We got a good crowd filtering in here tonight. It's going to be a fun one. I think these these last few weeks have been epic, and we're going to keep that going. So thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Happy Michael Myers Monday, everybody. Now, just a few things um, before I bring Dominic on here. You know, it's going to be, be very much like it's been the last few weeks. Um, we'll bring him on. I'll ask a few of my questions. Um, I'll try to save some of mine for later and, and give you first dibs on, on some of them this week. Um, I know I've um, hogged a lot of the, the question time in the last couple of weeks, but um, but I do want to um, remind you of a couple of things. Um, first of all, uh, obviously channel members and Super Chats are gonna get priority when we do get into the Q&A portion. Um, so keep that in mind, and channel memberships are just $5 a month. 
Also, um, keep in mind that um, next Monday, it's April 1st. Now, as of right now, we're probably going to be taking next week off as far as the live stream. That might change. Keep watching the channel. But um, it's the day after Easter, and um, it's spring break for us anyway, for our son. So for, for those reasons, um, we might be sitting that week out. On the other hand, if there's some exciting news that breaks, or one of our guests that we're talking to um, about coming on here, it, it might work out better for them to do it that week. Um, then we're certainly going to make ourselves available and we're going to do it. So keep watching if so. But you're definitely going to want to mark your calendars to be here two weeks from tonight on April 8th. Michael Myers Monday Live for the return of Dig Ferret to Halloween Daily. This time he's going to be hanging out live right here that Monday night talking to us, taking your questions and um, it's going to be a good time with Dig once again. And tonight, you know, I'm about to bring him in. We've got Dominic Cousineau Benoit, the director of Halloween Stalks and the new sequel, Halloween Stalks 2. These are fan films, of course. And this is a little new for us. We haven't done a ton on fan films here during these Triple M live streams in the past. But this is part of some of what I want to do more of, you know, in, in addition to, of course, having the, the creative side of, uh, of, of these films and the people that we know and love um, from these films, both in front and behind the camera, um, because this is Michael Myers Monday live and it's our celebration of this fandom, you know, I want to, from time to time, bring on people that are celebrating as fans in fun and unique and creative ways. And, and fan films are, of course, a huge part of that. For a lot of people, it's cosplay. For a lot of people, it's collectibles. Um, for, for a lot of people, it's all of the above. But um, So tonight, we're going to bring Dominic on. We're going to talk about his fan films. We're going to talk about fan films in general. And then he's going to take some of your questions. And, of course, we're going to discuss the TV series, um, what he's hoping to see what, what our educated guesses tell us we might see based on the recent comments from uh, Merrimax and so forth. So we'll get into all that. And then, of course, we will uh, do last week's poll results, which is favorite kill from Halloween Kills. That was in honor of Doug Tate being here last week. And, uh, and then we're going to launch this week's poll, and we'll do shout-outs at the end as well. Um, and maybe one or two just small little uh, news items as we go, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to bring Dominic on and um, and we'll just discuss those uh, news bites with him um, if, if we even get to it. We might be having so much fun with our um, fan film conversation that we put those on the back burner and that's fine too because um, when we have guests here, we roll out the orange carpet, so to speak, and, um, and make them feel welcome and uh, they take priority. So, um, just like it's been the last couple weeks, um, I am going to play a pre-recorded promo for a couple minutes while I bring Dominic in. He is here. He's in the house in our virtual green room right now, and I'm going to bring him in while we're off camera for just a few minutes, and then, um, and then we'll get going with, uh, our Q&A and um, in our discussion tonight. Um, if you haven't watched Halloween Stocks 2, I did put the link down in the description. Check it out when we're done here. If you're watching this on a replay, you can pause and watch it and come back. Um, I'll give you spoiler warning if and when we do get into any uh, spoilery discussions, though. Um, it is great to see everybody. I appreciate you joining us tonight. All right, I am going to, like I said, I'm going to play a brief pre-recorded promo right now while I bring Dominic on, and uh, and then we will get this show on the road. Happy Michael Myers Monday, everybody. If you love Halloween, more importantly, if you live Halloween 
every single day of your life, then you are absolutely in the right place right here on the Halloween Daily News YouTube channel. And the most direct way that you can help out and support what we do here at Halloween Daily News is by becoming a channel member. There's just one tier. It's just $5 a month. You get early access to our exclusive interviews, a lot of our exclusive pre-recorded content. Channel members also get access to exclusive merch discounts and many videos not made available to the public. There's also gonna be members only exclusive live events, giveaways, and lots more killer perks you can learn more about in the membership tab. It's basically like Patreon except here on YouTube. I urge you to consider it. We've got a really awesome, amazing, growing community in there already. And um, I would invite you to become a part of it. I'm Matt Arts for Halloween Daily News. Thank you for watching and thank you for considering becoming an HDN channel member. Hey everybody, I wanna remind you that we have official merch. That's right, now available in the HDN Spring Store. You can show your love for Halloween every day, all year round with official Halloween Daily News t-shirts. Many different designs are available, many different styles, colors, all sizes including the original HDN Classic, our special Triple M crew design for the Michael Myers Monday regulars out there, and our brand new What Would John Carpenter Do design. All of these are available, like I said, multiple sizes, colors, and styles on t-shirts, and that's not all. We've got other merch available, like mugs and stickers and lots of other cool stuff. Check it out now at the merch link in the description of this video. All right, here we go. We are back. We are live, and I am excited to welcome Mr. Dominic Cousineau Benoit. Welcome to Halloween Daily, Dominic, and happy Michael Myers Monday. Thanks so happy much. Happy Myers Monday to you see. too. A very pleasure. Thank you for having me, and congrats on the, on the show. You're you're an institution in this community, so it's quite an honor to be here. Thank you. Oh man, you're you're too kind, but I but I love it. I love it. <laughs> Bring it on. That's awesome. No, um, thank you. Thank you. I'm excited. I'll have the king. Here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that, but uh, but uh, hey, I'll I'll take it if you're gonna say it. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate Cheers. It, yeah. Man. Here's to you. I don't have my Michael Myers mug though, so uh, yeah. See, I'm, I'm not there yet. Tea tonight, but it's it's the same. I'm still I'm still toasting. Yeah, I had to go with coffee at this time of the night. Yeah, yeah. I got I got just some warm tea myself, just to to uh, to warm things up a little bit. But um, this is awesome. This is awesome. I, I love your uh, your films, your fan films, the Halloween Stocks series now. The series, and, yeah. Um, I'm You've seen them recently, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I just watched uh, part two just just the other night. So it's fresh in your mind. When, when is the last time you watched part, uh, part one? When I watched part one, it was probably, well, let's see. When did I watch it for the... It's a two-parter, like it's two I, different stories, but they're connected somehow. So it's always a good idea to watch them one after the other. I, uh, I think it, I watched it, um, it was right around Halloween last year, actually. Good choice, smart choice. It was It was when we, we uh, communicated for the first time, because I know um, you, had, you had reached out at one point and like sent the uh, Yeah, I was fangirling the a little link. bit. Check it out, check it out. It, it was like right around the time it was released. And, oh, and, so, um, and I just had a lot of stuff going on, kind of put it on the back yeah. burner and it was like, I need to watch this, but I'm going to put it away. 
And then I, I, um, I think it was on the Halloween Lives podcast. I saw you on there, and it still didn't connect. But I was like, I need to check out this guy's fan film. And then when I went to watch, I was like, Oh yeah, he he sent this to me months ago. And and yeah, so then that's when I finally watched. So it we, have thank, it. Uh, we have I to thank we have to thank Blaine and uh, Blaine and Austin yeah, for definitely. that. Yeah. Absolutely. Two, two very nice guys. You've been on their show, huh? Two, uh, two oh, very oh, yeah. nice gentlemen. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we like what what they're doing, and yeah, they're very cool. Um, so so let's let's back up just for a minute because I always like to, whenever we can, just to talk a little bit. Um, even outside of, even though it's Michael Myers Monday tonight, it, get outside the Myers franchise for just a little bit to talk about the Halloween holiday itself. Okay. And um. And um, I'm just always fascinated with everybody's experience with the holiday. If you grew up celebrating it and if you get into it now and, and, and with you um, growing up in Montreal, I'm curious what, what the Halloween scene is like there and has been like there. So um, what, what, what can you tell us about Halloween and in your real life aside from, from the um, I was very big on Halloween when I was a kid. Actually, I grew up in the suburbs of Montreal. So uh, actually, the, the the streets in my hometown could look a little bit like Haddonfield. Um, I miss those those old days. I'm 37 and a half now. And uh, nowadays, everybody will buy those huge inflatable characters or animatronics. But back then, people were more crafty, right? We would just pack autumn leaves in the pants and a shirt and try to make someone sitting on a chair or stuff like that. We would build things. It, it didn't totally disappear, but people nowadays go for the, the, the easy solution. And there's something more personal with the, the craft aspect of it. So uh, that would be my, my memories. I, I remember when I was 11 or 12, perhaps it's a little bit old. One year, my, my mom told me, Dom, this is the last year you're going. I told you last year, you're going again. This year is really the last. So uh, I decided to 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 finish it uh, big. I I took a real garbage bag, and I did every street like it was meticulous. Every street, one after the other, twice. And I came back home with something very heavy. It was like the Santa Claus bag on my shoulder, and it took it took a year to eat all of it. <laughs> I, I'm big on sugar. I love that. I love that. Well, then I know you'll you'll like. We always ask what your favorite Halloween candy is, and then I'm also going to ask your favorite Halloween costume that you've worn. Uh, at some point, I, I was really into serial killers, the, the or, or beloved franchises. I, I was a big fan of uh, of Scream. I still am. Um, Friday the Thirteenth a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I convinced my dad to buy me a coverall, but he only bought me that. So year after year, we just. Like recycle the same coverall but put a different mask. <laughs> so, like in high school, in my third grade, I would be Michael Myers. In the fourth grade, I would be Jason, but only the mask would change. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Th th there's something like wearing this mask in public on that very specific day. Huh? The three, the three, three hundred sixty-four other days of the year, do that, and you will be pointed out as a lunatic. But on that very day, you are praised for being creepy. So uh, I really enjoyed dressing. Uh, Dressing in school. Um, I have a little anecdote here. Time jump. I'm yeah. I'm studying in college, uh, so maybe seven, eight years ago, something like that. Um, I've been told many times in my life that I look like Woody in Toy Story. Pointy nose, round hair, long arms, silly face. Uh, so I, I was harassed by my friend that I had to dress like Woody. And for years, I, I, I held my stand. No, I'm not going to do it. But at some point, uh, I decided to do it. And um, there was this one year, uh, I'm in college in Montreal, like there's 40,000 students in every campus. So uh, I had to spend the Halloween day in the main campus. Like So in, during that day, there's at least 10,000 students that will go, come and go. Uh, so I decided, ah, let's go to school dressed as Woody. This is gonna be cool, like in the crowd with everybody else dressed or whatever. I was the only one wearing a Halloween costume. And this is not a way of speaking. I walked the school. I only had one class by the end of the day. I came early in the morning because I wanted to spend the day through those people that would be dressed. I was the only one. I, at some point I had to go to the, the, the school library to print documents. 
So there I am, all fluo with my with my rubber hat, and people just look at me, what the hell is wrong with him? But what the hell is wrong with you? It's Halloween and no one has that Halloween spirit in there. And at the end of the day, the class came. I was trying to intervene, like to answer uh, the, the, the teacher's question. I was never taken seriously. But that got me a date. I got a date. So well, it was not for nothing. Yeah. So, yeah. So something something good came out of it. And, yeah, I mean, hopefully that, that date appreciated that you were, you were in the Halloween spirit when nobody else. I mean, come on, people. I mean, nobody else. Still to this day, I don't understand that. And it's not like Halloween was during the weekend and Friday was the 13th. No, it was really the Halloween date. It was the 31st. No one was dressed. People are dead inside, man. Yeah. It's ugly out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. What about you? Yeah. Your, your, your best uh, Halloween memory or your silliest? Silliest is more interesting. Oh, man. I mean, there's... there's been tons i mean i i can remember my dad scaring other trick-or-treaters because he'd have a mask on and then he'd take it off and have another one under it and i just you know Smart i just thought that evil. was like one of the coolest things you know um i think i would do it later but i would do do like try to have my face made up and, and try to have a mask over it so i could um so uh maybe stuff like that you know making memories huh when oh, I was yeah, a teenager, definitely. one of my one of my very pleasure was to scare the shit out of my mom. I wouldn't wait for Halloween actually. We had the, we, we lived in a house where the, the the sink in the kitchen was facing a window, and when it's pitch black out there, you don't see anything. So I was out dressed as Michael Myers with a very cheap rubber mask, like ten feet away from the window, and she's there washing dishes and she doesn't see me. So I just take a step forward, she still doesn't see me. Another step. And at some point, she she raised her head and she sees me. Man, she became white. She yelled. She was so mad at me forever. But it was so worth it. I, I was horrible with her. <laughs> That's what a kid is supposed to do. Yeah. And and every day is Halloween. I mean, that that's mm -hmm. kind of that's that's kind of our motto, so Hey, I posted a film, a Halloween fan film on March 15th. So yeah, every day yeah. is Halloween. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's move into that with um, Michael Myers. Do you remember like the first time you, you became aware of Michael Myers or saw one of the movies or, or just because I, I yeah. try to remember and it's always just always been there. You know, it's like I don't know the very first viewing because it's just it it's always been there. So do you know like when Michael Myers enters your consciousness? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I was 10 years old. Uh, Scream just came out. Uh, I didn't know anything about slasher films. To me, horror films were like Jaws, Aliens, stuff like that. But slashers, I wasn't really aware. And uh, yeah, every kid would talk about Scream in the schoolyard. Like, you have to rent it on pay-per-view. So that very weekend, I, I, I begged my parents to rent it because I didn't want to be the only lame kid left alone that didn't see it um I, I was scared to death watching that film it's really really scary when you're 10 years old even if it's on a small tv screen of course we rented it uh on, on the evening so we watched it in the dark yeah. um i was i was fascinated by the mask of the killer in scream but it was kind of overshadowed by those rumors about halloween because the original scream make uh, very specific allusions to Halloween, Drew Barrymore is about to watch it when she uh, she's uh, she's been attacked. Uh, Randy, when he's doing his um, nice speech on how to survive a, a horror movie, there's a freeze frame of of the shape behind him on on the TV. Oh yeah, yeah. Or so like holding the knife up. And, yeah. yeah. So we're watching that, and I, I turn to my mom and mom, do do you know do you know that do you know what Halloween is? And my mom has always been the the, the most scared person she, she's she's a chicken uh, but she can't help herself she has to watch horror films no matter what and she tells me the story that in 1978 she went see halloween in the cinema with her then boyfriend and back then people weren't um they weren't used to 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 scary movie uh, or desensitized i mean as we are now 
So she's waiting in line for for a little while, and the people who just watch the film that are coming out of the of the theater tell people in line, "Don't go watch this. You you're ne you're never you'll never recover from it. Like you'll you'll get traumatized." So my mom tells me she looked at her boyfriend, and she she did the eyes of the puss in boot and Shrek. I don't want to go anymore. Yeah. And the, the boyfriend, come on, let's go. We, it, it can be that bad. Let's go. We've been waiting for a while. So they, they ended up going. And one, what she told me is that during the, the during the film, she would have her hand on his. And every time there would be a jump scare or a scary scene, her nails would dig in the hand <laughs> of the boyfriend. And by the end of the film, like it was totally slashed. And she she... Ended up her, her beautiful story by telling me, son, there's no way you will ever watch this film. So what did I do? Uh, I gathered with some friends and we managed to get our hands on a VHS copy of the film. And we, we enjoyed it very, very much. My encounter awesome. with the shape. Yeah, pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah, I like that. And and yeah, I mean, to hear your mom's terrifying in, in, in encounter um, back in the day at, at the time theatrical release that's awesome lucky her man watching that in theater would be quite something i know sometimes they, they yeah. do re-release but it's not <laughs> the same thing when you don't know right. what to expect she went in there blind yeah it's like yeah. re-watching jurassic park for the first time and how, how much of a dream would that be <laughs> well i was gonna say or or scream like i remember when scream came out and seeing it in the theater and not really I mean, I knew it was Wes Craven. I knew his work, but I, I didn't really know a whole lot. You know, it was before the internet, really. So it, it wasn't like I knew a lot about the plot or anything. You know, I didn't even know what mask they were going to use. And, but I just remember that opening scene. Yeah. Drew Barrymore, it just blew me away. And like you said, when they're they're referencing Jason and Michael, and it's just, I'm like, oh, my God, they're speaking my language. It's, uh, it's an old slasher. era that I, um, I really missed. Nowadays, uh, promotional material show everything. Uh, the last three Halloweens, just put together, cut together all the trailers and clips and uh, TV, TV teaser. You, you see pretty much everything. But back then, they were good at keeping mystery. And in my memory, I, I might be wrong, but I think the trailer for Scream was pretty mysterious. Like, you, Yeah, you would see her on the phone, yeah. but... You, you wouldn't really know what it was about. And yeah, I think you're right. It, it didn't really show the, the mask of the killer. So when it pops up on screen for the first time in those first 10 minutes, ooh, this is effective, man. Yeah. He turns, he's like closed, uh, framed in a close-up. When she's yes. outside, he breaks through the window. But when he turns, holy smoke. Very effective jump scare there. And I always say that that opening scene, I mean, like if I was teaching a film class of like, you know, how to do an effective, scary sequence. I mean, that it's just a perfect scene, you know? I mean, because it goes from fun and lighthearted, and you're just like, oh, they're playing a horror game, a horror trivia game? This is great. I know I know these answers. I know. And then it just gets so brutal at the very end. I mean, it's just, you know, when the parents come home and they find her, it's just, I, I just love it. The writing was very smart uh, from from Kevin Williamson because yeah. to to get invested in a such short scene, you need to care for your character. But when the film starts, it starts with the phone ring, so you, you don't have exposition on who right. that character, who Drew Barrymore is. Everybody loves Drew Barrymore. Casting her in that role probably wasn't an accident, yeah. but still, the writing makes it like the exposition moves forward through the call with the killer through the questions he asks her because her way of answering it, the answer she gives, you you get to know her a little bit. Exactly. And the more it goes, the more you care for her. But that's very well crafted because the more it goes, the more you know she's in danger. So within those eight or 10 minutes, not only do you have a very suspenseful and um, fun sequence, but you get to know that character. And that was masterfully written. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Just just perfect. It's blueprints, man. Blueprints for a good sequence. It is. Totally. Yeah. That's what I always say. I mean, that that that's like a lesson in how to do it right, right there. Um so <laughs> back to Haddonfield. Um have you how when did you get into making films? I mean, I I don't think uh you just started with, with making Halloween stocks, or did you? Have you when did all this start um, for you? 
it's a yes and a no. Okay. Uh, before doing my first Halloween stocks, I had never done anything like that myself. I've never done okay. a professional short film. Um, I've been working as a videographer for eight years now. So I mainly do corporate videos. And I mean, I don't do big setups. I work by myself. Like I will set a camera. I will set the light. I will put a, a mic on the, the person I have to interview. And voila, it's pretty, pretty easy doing. Um, before that, I studied in film school. And I worked on uh, TV sets and film sets, but mostly as a production assistant. So I would always be kept away from the real good action because as PAs, we would do what they don't want to do and they don't have the time to do. So you're not hanging out on set, you're doing something else. You're setting the next thing, you're moving tables. Um, so I, I didn't have a very, very close encounter with filmmaking, uh, but I've always been into cinema, of course. And I, I just consume making ofs before doing my first Halloween stocks. I think I spent a year watching every documentary and interview I could find about the first Halloween. So at the end, I think I would hear, I would hear John Carpenter and Nick Castle repeat the same things because on YouTube, there are plenty of interviews, but those people at some point, they get asked the same questions, but that's how it got implanted and it, it stuck with me. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I kind of improvised myself a filmmaker. Uh, it's been a dream of mine of making a fan film for a while. I, as a nerd and a lover of the franchise, but of many franchise, mm -hmm. I, I love spending time on IMDb's to to read trivia's, and of course, I would spend a lot of time on YouTube watching uh, videos like making up and stuff. And then I, I found out about fan films. I didn't really know what it was until a, a few years back. And when it comes to fan films, as um, it's about the love those creators have for the source yeah. material, they are not all filmmakers. Like yeah. professionally, I mean. They're all filmmakers as they made those fan films, but they are not, they're not all professional filmmakers working in that area for, for a living. So you, you can see a, a, a wide range of quality. The, the love for the franchise is the same. It's yeah. really a technical quality. And some of those fan films really, really stand out. And uh, I'm going to do some name dropping, but uh, The Haddonfield Nightmare was one I watched that I was really impressed by. Um, the, the Coleman brothers, they, they made um, Halloween Inferno. Mm -hmm. uh, I stumbled by accident on the, the three-parters, uh, like regrouped in, the, in the one video and God, that was good. But as I was watching that, knowing it's a fan film, holy hell, how did they achieve that? But what's cool with the Coleman's is that they they documented their uh, their process. There's not much, but there's uh, there's a few video behind the scene, and then you you would see them setting up scenes and explaining why they decided to shoot uh, a certain angle or stuff like that. And watching that. Oh, it doesn't seem that unreachable to make something uh, quality wise. Yeah. So th the idea was was there. I would always use my day job as a videographer to push that dream further. But the real reason I would push it further was that I was afraid to to commit and and try, because making a fan film ultimately it you want people to watch it, and it's very uh, it's very stressful to to put yourself out there. But the work itself, I was very intimidated by, by the work that it represented as I didn't know I was I would get myself into. So for a few years, I would just avoid until one morning I woke up and I figured the fear of not doing it is kind of becoming more, um, more powerful than the fear of trying. So in 2022, uh, the year before I saw Halloween Kills, I was very... Amused in the in the cinema, I bought a trick or treat studio mask for fun, and that Halloween in 2021, my a friend of mine organized a haunted house for Halloween. He he's a dad, and he liked to uh, to 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 um, entertain the kids in the neighborhood, and he asked me to come and scare kids. You asked me to scare kids? That that's what I do best. Come, on, I, I'm here, and I had a really good time. So it became a little bit more real. So time jump in 2022. I have a slight idea of a little story I could tell that would be very simple, that, but that would allow me to explore nighttime filmmaking and uh, building suspense scenes. Mm -hmm. um, and on my birthday, 
September 7, 2022, I decided to, 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 to be mean to myself and to kick my own butt. So I, I made a Instagram story. Guys, I will make a Halloween fan film. I did that because otherwise I wouldn't have commit. But then it was out there and I, I couldn't step back. But when I did that, a part of the idea, I had nothing. No cast, no crew, no filming locations. And I really wanted to film during fall because in Quebec, the fall season is very short, but visually stunning and would really emphasize the, the vibe of the film. Well, the first thing I did is uh, reach out to a director of photography I, I met a few months back on the project. And I, I invited him to a coffee shop. I brought the script I wrote and uh, I, I asked him to read him in front of me and give me his opinion. Like, when you read that, what does it imp uh, what does it implicate? Do you have any advice, technical advice? So uh, Jean-Philippe, who ended up being the director of photography of both my fan films, read that in front of me. So it takes 10 minutes. It's a 10-page thing. And when he finishes, he, he, he raises his eyes, looks at me, and do you need a director of photography? That was very flattering, but it became a real thing then. As soon as as other people get involved, it becomes a real thing. It moves yeah. further than the than that status of of an idea. And uh, yeah, I, I just kicked my own butt. I I, I found actors, uh, I found filming locations. We, I think, a week or two before filming, we went out there in the wood just to make some tests. Mm -hmm. It was excruciating. We we had a golf cart to move through those woods. It, it the the battery took water, so I had to push it. Like, I was very close to to quit, but when we got to destination, yeah. and my my uh, Michael Myers actor came on set for those tests with the mask in the dark with the light that we we had set, oh, I was spooked. The guy had been a friend of mine for fifteen years. I couldn't look at him in the eyes. Like I know the guy. I know it's a character. I know I'm here to make a film. Still, I can't look at him in the eyes. So then I knew, okay, I'm on the path of something special. I'm going to hold on. The rest is history. Halloween Stocks came out four months later. Wow. That's that's awesome. And, and yeah, now as we're speaking, this Michael Myers Monday, what, a, a year and two months roughly later... Now you've just hit 150,000 views. This very day. Stocks <laughs> this morning. Today, very fittingly <laughs> on Monday. Um, well, congrats on that, first Thank of you. all. I mean, that's a that's an impressive milestone for anybody. And, um, and so that makes, uh, uh, you know, that informs me more of where, where you're coming from and kind of your background. And, and I think that was... Um, a fascinating but wise first choice to immediately lock in to your DP first, because of course, if you're going to achieve anything approaching like the, that classic look of, you know, the 78 film Dean Cundy and, and what Carpenter did, that's going to be so key. Um, mm -hmm. So, so the fact that that was the, the first piece of the puzzle um, for you to, to add in other than yourself, yeah, and I was really was lucky because he, he took the project seriously from the get-go. Like, yeah. you know, not so long after that, he he brought to me a document. He, he gathered pictures from the first film and show it showed me we could light that way so we could replicate that the, 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 that look. And I, yeah. he really got invested. I think the, the, the script, the story really talked to him. Uh, so he, he enjoyed doing that. It was not a gig. It was not paid, so it was not a, a gig. He, he really, really enjoyed it, as we all did, I think. Like when I do those films, uh, I don't really have a budget. I, I funded the two films myself, yeah. So I, I I would love to, but I can't pay my people. So when I when I try to recruit and ask film workers to come help out, I always say if you can only come one one night or one yeah. filming date, it, it's a lot. Like thank you very much. Most of them did both runs entirely because I think they enjoyed. The, the atmosphere on set, uh, yeah. I can be a pretty good people person. And I'm very uh, grateful when people come help out. So I think they could feel it. It's also very special when you're uh, on a set and uh, Michael Myers is there and you're about to shoot a 
a, a slasher sequence. It's not something that's done a lot here in uh, in Quebec, yeah. but it, they kept coming back. So I, I tell myself, I guess I was doing something right there. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, it sounds like it, and and like you said, the fact that they kept coming back, and uh, and you were giving them the easy out if if they didn't like it, if they they weren't into it. So yeah, I mean, but as you're saying, I mean, fan films by definition they are it's a work of passion. You know, you mm -hmm. can't, you know, it's this interesting thing where you're you're basically taking an IP, you know, and and adapting it and and putting your spin on it. And, you know, you can't really monetize it. You can't, you know, it can't really be a money-making thing, but it's like a pros and cons because you can hypothetically put a lot of eyeballs on your work and it can be almost mm. like a like a business card in some ways, um, I think. Um, and like you said, though, because it, of the nature of what it is, you do have that, that wide range of quality, but as you said, the, the passion... For all of it is always the same you know whether it's you know uh, the high-end fan film or the the low end um but it's it's always about the passion so so can you talk a little bit about that making that decision knowing that you know you know this isn't really you know it's not an original idea it's it's we're going to take my idea and put it into john carpenter's world and and you know that unique niche that is fan films and it's not just this franchise i mean there there's fan films in all different franchises but there are a lot in the it, it is its mm -hmm. own kind of you know um niche within the the halloween michael myers fandom in a lot of ways i love horror but halloween has a special place uh i think it it goes back to that story with my mom. She told me no, and I had to. <laughs> so, I've never been that grateful that someone told me no, because uh, look at where it led 30, 30 years later. Yeah. Um, well, the first, uh, the first Halloween stocks I made, at first, it was really a, a personal project. I had no idea if it would ever be seen by, by anyone. I always planned to, to put it online, of course, but I had no budget, no experience, so I, I didn't know it it would come out as good as it did, <laughs> thanks to my cast and crew. Uh, they were believable, uh, cast-wise, I mean. The crew were, were very, very dedicated. But the main idea of doing that film was to go enjoy myself. Like, I want to learn filmmaking. I want to yeah. learn uh, nighttime shoot. I, I want to learn what it is to be on set and to, to manage a, a team. Because I didn't know all those things. I didn't know uh, what it was. Yeah. Uh, so it was more of a... I would call my first Halloween talk an essay at some point. Uh, it, it's not a very complex story. It's very straightforward, very simple. And in, in early stages, I wasn't even going to make a full film. It was going to be just a scene. I found the filming location because of one of my friends. Uh, it's the house of his parents. And I went there the summer before making my film. So in uh, 2022, summer 2022, and when I went in the backyard and I saw that tree and that shed and that porch, I just walked to that tree. It was midday, it was very sunny. And I tell my friend Benoit, who ended up playing the shape, just walk toward the, the, the shed. And I was filming him with my iPhone. And that became the scene when Paul gets out of the house and there's that yeah. camera movement revealing the shape hiding behind the tree while he's walking there. So just that image unlocked that the storyline for at least that scene. Mm -hmm. And that's all I was aimed to do, film that scene, that image that I had in my mind. But as I was thinking about it and starting to gear up, I'm curious to know who's that guy who came out of a house? So what happened before? And when the shape looks at him, what will happen after? Like mm -hmm. I get curious of my own idea to expand my own idea. So I couldn't help myself. I wanted I wanted it to be simple because it was my first experience. I ended up with a 14 long minutes film. Uh, it was very, very difficult, but oh my God, was it fun and worth it. Uh, while I was doing that, I'm no expert in social medias or, uh, or marketing. Because I didn't want to annoy my friends and family on my social medias, but I still wanted to show a little bit of what I was doing. I created a Instagram account for Halloween stocks. Lucky me, 
a uh, at Halloween Stocks was uh, was not used. So uh, the the title of the films kind of come from there. That title was uh, was free because I had two or three ideas for titles. Um, so at first I had one follower, my other Instagram account. Then I asked a few of my friends, please support mm -hmm. me. So I think a month later, 18 followers. Then I start posting uh, behind the scene photos. Uh, and on October 31st, uh, I posted the, the, the trailer with some hashtags, Halloween fan film, Halloween stocks, Halloween trailer. So the next week, like 20, 30 more followers. This time, people I don't know. And without me knowing, a, a small community took shape around my project. And I started to receive encouragement messages. And that really fueled me. That really like pushed me to finish. Because at, at some moments, the process was very complicated. Yeah. Um, and when I ended up putting the thing on, uh, on YouTube on January 13th, I knew that that community that shaped around my project, it wasn't a big community, a few hundred persons. But when I put the film online, it became viral. I don't know how, because I didn't really do any um, marketing campaign. I, I didn't pay anything. I didn't know how algorithms worked. I just put the film on there. And without me knowing, a week later, the film had been watched like 25,000 times. Like, what the hell is happening here? But more than the more, more than the amount of views, because that's quantity. I always focus on quality. The comments I would get, not only one-liners, hey, nice, well done, cool. No, no, long paragraphs of appreciation of people telling me you did that good, you nailed that. John Carpenter would be proud. What? Hey, I'm a little boy living in a small town on the south shore of Montreal. I made a film for fun, and it, it caught like people's attention. Yeah. At some point, I still have uh, I still have trouble to call people fans. But, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to do my best here. The first film wasn't out yet. It was uh, the, the the production was over. I was halfway through post production, so it's December 2022, and there's this young man living in Florida. Uh, his name is Ray. Uh, never met the guy. I don't know the guy. He reached out to me a few weeks before that and we chatted from time to time he was always encouraging me but nothing more than that and uh, by the end of December he reach he reaches out one more time and tells me hey Nick Castle is going to a convention here in Florida this uh, this weekend I'm gonna go see him and I'll tell him about your film cool okay when people tell you things sometimes it doesn't really happen so I take things with a, a grain of salt but the, the the intention is pure and very kind so Thanks, Rick. I really appreciate that. If it works, it works. And amazing. Two or three days later, Ray reaches out again. But this time, it's not a message. It's a video. The guy went to the convention. He went to Nick Castle. He showed him the trailer. And he asked the man to record a message to support my film. So I have a video that I posted on my YouTube in which Nick Castle says, Hey, I'm going to go see Halloween stocks when it comes out. That's awesome. And I got a panic attack. It lasted for hours. I would walk in my condo. I didn't know how to manage those emotions. What the hell was that? What am I going to do with that? Like, it's the ultimate validation. And the film is not out yet. So it, have, it has to live up to, to this hype. But uh, no, uh, uh, like you said, uh, a year, 14 months later, the first film is still, still catching attention. It's been months since I, I, I didn't push or promote the first one, but it keeps getting watched daily, like yeah. every day. And we, we reached that number of views that's so, not unrealistic, but I, I, I say that and it doesn't make sense. I, I don't understand what, what it means. 150,000 views on a film that I made, that I made with no budget, like for fun, with friends in the woods. So no, I, I'm really blessed because this community is the best ever. Horror fans, horror communities are the kindest people. The support, I guess, is genuine. There's no hidden agendas. There's no jealousy. People are genuinely happy to see my film succeeding. And this is worth everything. Yeah.
you're right about that. I mean, the Hart fans are the best. And, and yeah, I mean, I think, you know, one of the things that a lot of fans of this franchise, you know, like about your films is some of what, you know, you mentioned that you were probably getting comments from, um, you know, you're, 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 you're setting up the cinematography first and trying to, to capture these uh, dark looks that, you know, we see in the original film and, and in Carpenter's work and, you know, you're framing things, you know, it's, and I think from a story standpoint, you know, it, it kind of benefits from not having too much going on. Um, I think, you know, again, it knows what it is. It's a fan film. Um, it, it, it's just a slice, no pun intended of, of Halloween night with, with the shape and, uh, and, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you don't have it, uh, you trim the fact, I feel like, you know, it's, it's just, just the good stuff. And, and I feel One of like, the uh, biggest lesson I've ever received in cinema yeah. is that less is more. Yeah. Less is always more. If you think that can go out, if you ask yourself, does this, could this go out? It means it can, and you have to take yeah. it out. You only yeah. keep what it's is a essential. That's a... Asking yeah. the question is answering it. There you go. Yeah, no, I think that's exactly right. Yeah, if you have to ask the question, you've already answered it for yourself. So, um, and yeah, it shows on there. And yeah, it's just, you know, like I said, it's just, it knows what it needs to be and nothing more. And it just um, accomplishes that. And um, and so now you've got the sequel with Halloween Stocks 2. Mm -hmm. um, what... What made you want to do it again? Did you did you know like as soon as you you did it you wanted to do it again? How long did it take to decide? Let me oh god let uh, me do this again. Not too long actually. Uh, yeah. The reason why I made the second one was to cope with the fact that I finished working on the first one. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> when the first one came out, uh, I had never been immersed that much in a project. It, it got encompassing without me knowing. Like yeah. I. To make Halloween stocks, and I did the same thing for Halloween stocks too, I put my day job aside. So not only do I spend to make those films, I'm not earning money because I want to dedicate myself 100% of those films. Because first, it needs that. It needs work. But also, I want to live the experience at its fullest. It's fun to make. I mean, it's not work. It is. But to me, I'm not going to work when I'm making those fan films. I'm enjoying myself as hell. I always tell my friends when they ask me, man, why are you doing that? Why are you spending so much on those fan films that won't that won't like bring you uh, revenues? And I always answer, some people will spend thousands of dollars and leave one month in Southeast Asia to, to, to go scuba diving. This is my trip. And instead of bringing back some photos I will have taken with my phone, my memories will be those films and I will cherish them forever. And I will rewatch them in 10, 15, 20 years and I will still be proud and it will be reminiscent of the hard work that really ended up ended the paying off but yeah when i finished the first one and I, I put it online one day i'm working like i've been working four months non-stop and then one morning it's over and i i i, I hadn't prepared myself to that cut i i felt uh, uh people laugh at it when i say that but some kind of a post po postpartum depression I felt like a parent who, who let go of the hand of his, <laughs> of his kid yeah. and observed from afar the kid doing his own thing in, in the world. <laughs> uh, so for maybe two or three weeks, uh, I was really sad. Like I wasn't, not in a bad place, but yeah, a little depressed, you know, mm -hmm. until one morning uh, by the end of January, an idea, like the seed, just, just one image, mm -hmm. the image I don't know where it came from. The image of a mom and her boy hiding in a treehouse, looking through the windows, trying to find a predator. Just that. That was the birth of Halloween Stocks 2. I built the whole story around that image. I don't even remember how it came. And that was late January or at least early February because Facebook reminded me that on February 15th, I was already looking out for three houses. Like, does this yeah. still exist in 2023? Yeah, wow. Uh, That's a good question, yeah. But yeah, the, 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 the whole thing started because I, I needed something to do to forget my sadness of 
being done with the first Halloween stocks. But the more the idea was taking shape in my head, the more I was excited because I was building a real scenario this time. Halloween stocks, number one, I wrote the thing in a few days. It was an essay. So I knew it wouldn't be something complex. I still made the effort of introducing characters and made them um, not special, but unique in a way so you can relate or uh, get invested. Mm -hmm. But it's a very simple story. It's well made. It's well crafted. I came on set prepared. Uh, no frame is um, as artist. I, I, I did everything with a purpose. Yeah. But the second one is something else. I I took my goddamn time to craft this story in my head yeah. before deciding I would really do it. Just the just the writing part was good enough to uh, take me back up from the pain of having finished the first one. But then that, when the story was kind of complete in my head, I, I just couldn't not do it. It's too good of a story not to do it. It cannot be shelled. It has to see the light of day and soon. H45 was coming up, so there was a momentum. My first film came out uh, a few months before, so it was still fresh in people's memories. So I didn't want to wait. I kind of rushed into production because finding my actors was very difficult, very complicated. So the entire production, I was always like behind and running. Like I think I, I never gave my crew the description of what we were going to do during the day we were meeting. Yeah. They, they had no idea because I didn't have time to make the documents because I was always running, trying to, to, to just get on time. But yeah. yeah, no, it went well, no matter what. And uh, the crew watched the film. We had a premiere before the film was released on the, on YouTube. First time ever, one of my, pro one of my project was um, on, a, on a big screen, but hearing people reacting at the good yeah. times in the film. Like they gasp, they scream, they jump. That was priceless, man. Oh God. Awesome. And it's been out now as we're speaking, I, I think you said 10 days. Yeah. Um, not even two weeks. And it's already up to over 18,000 views itself. So, I mean, it's it's well on its way to, to catching up with part one, I'm sure. Yeah, slowly but surely we'll get there. Uh, it's, it's in the long run. It's always cycles with those fan films because most people will watch them during October. So every year in October, there will be a boost. But then uh, during the winter, when people are bored at home, they will watch it again. And perhaps during the summer when there's a storm outside and they miss Halloween. So there, there's cycles. So I don't worry about it. I think the film speaks for itself. Its quality speaks for itself. Uh, I I doubt it will it will be forgotten. I and mean, you're, you're right. They will... Um cycle up every fall in October as people just want to see. Um, people have stuff. playlists. People have fan films playlists. Like they watch oh, yeah. plenty of fan films that they save and every year they will watch the same playlist again. It's an honor oh, yeah. for, for uh, content creators. Absolutely. And and you've mentioned, you know, some that, that you watched and, and inspired you and everything. And like I said, there, there's just been so, so many over the years. Um, I'm going to, uh, see if there's some viewer questions. So, guys, if you've got questions Absolutely, in live chat, you yeah. can fire away now. Um, as I'm checking on this, for anybody unfamiliar, I mean, how would you describe the films as far as the story that it is? Um, you know, it's 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 kind of its own thing. You know, it's like I said, it's just kind of a, a slice of Halloween night. But but uh, what what can you tell people that? Uh, we're going back to the, uh, we're those. going back to the roots. We're going back to the basics, and it doesn't mean that we recreate the stories we've seen in the first films. We are trying, and I think we managed to recapture the tone of those films. It's yeah. more suspenseful, suspenseful than it is brutal. Uh, the shape we we portray in my films is not the bull that we've seen in the more recent film when he he jumps, he lunges, he, he re, he's really yeah. uh, physical and um, and brutal. No, no, we go back to the old shape who takes his time. He talks and he enjoys that. Huh? The door is open. He could grab you, but no, he looks at you and he waits. Uh, at some point, he, he will. He's, he's closing in, but he enjoys the process. Yeah. He's more playful and more... Uh, yeah, we, we reconnect with the stalker persona. Uh, I, I really wanted to, to tell an original story. As a, as a fan, I felt it was not my place to... Um, 
I, I already take the character of Michael Myers, the shape, but I felt it was too much if I would take other characters and made them my own. Like, I wouldn't have uh, portrayed my own Laurie Strode, my, my own Loomis, and I'm not criticizing any other creator do, who does that, but in my mind, uh, I, I need to keep that. It's John Carpenter's. I will only take the character of the shape and try to do something that reflects what he did. But I, I want at some point those stories to be my own as well. Yeah. Um, and as the context goes, my, my canva, my creative canva is that my films that are linked together are a direct sequel to the original. So I kind of do a David Gordon Green of myself by eliminating yeah. everything else. Uh, but I figured that at the end of the first film, when the shape fell off the balcony, mm -hmm. uh, part two didn't happen. He fell off the balcony, uh, Dr. Loomis looks down, he's not there anymore, and he's never seen again. But every year in Adenfield or the surroundings during Halloween, there are weird occurrences. Attacks, murders that are always unexplained. So the legend of the boogeyman keeps coming back. But is it Michael Myers, a mental patient that escaped years ago? My stories are, are set in the early, early 90s. Uh, I didn't want uh, to have my stories in a smartphone world. I wanted to be smartphone free. But I didn't want them to be in the 70s because recreating those uh, the visuals of those eras would be complicated. So I think the yeah. 90s, when I was a kid and I have all my memories, was a good uh, a good spot. So it allows me, using that Canva, to make um, anthology stories, in yeah. a way. Like mm -hmm. One attack that happened, that's it. And then I could make another film, and it's the year after, and it's another... Small story with the beginning, a middle, and and and, and hand, and yeah. that way it's kind of endless. You can do pretty much whatever you want, and you just keep it um, faithful to what it was. John yeah. Carpenter's is a master, so I really wanted to pay homage to what he did. Yeah, well, I definitely see a lot of love and homage to Carpenter, and I love that approach that that you just described. Of you know, it is just you know kind of a random attack and it's the shape doing what he does. And like I said, it trims the fat. We don't, we don't need reason and mythology because mm. we don't, we don't get that in 78, you know? Yeah. So that's what just... I wanted to say a little earlier as well. I, I didn't want to disrespect what came before yeah. by creating new mythology. Right. So I, I don't explain motivations i don't explain uh, super strength and i don't reuse yeah. existing characters i i don't build on something that exists or bring it further mm -hmm. it's dangerous to do that yeah. so that's why i try to create something new the, the mythology is as thin as it is that that's what john carpenter intended he didn't want yes. the character to be understood or explained he wanted to keep it not even him it in the dark so that's what i try to do he just shows up he does his thing and he moves yeah. forward i think that's the way to go and and i don't know maybe that's that's the way to go on on you know for the franchise um officially i mean because like you said i mean it's kind of endless if you take that approach you know you can always mm -hmm. kind of have it and um and and if, if you handle it the way you did um, all right, I'm going to turn over here and, and see if we've got some um, comments. And I've got other questions, if not. But let's, let's, let me try to um, see if we've got some questions and comments uh, from the live chat. Um, well, Mike says, well said, Dominic. So, yeah, they agree with you on that. I'll take that. Um, Thank you. Josh says, this is a great interview. Dominic is very insightful. So there you go. Um, let's see. But I, I totally agree with you with Michael being the stalker and, and sneaky um, and playful. Are you are you a fan of the sister storyline? As far as the Laurie Str the sister storyline? Hmm? I mean, I, I have no problem with them not uh, acknowledging it. You know what I mean? Like what David Gordon Green did. It um, gives him a, a motivation when, when they are related. 
exactly. those storylines give him a, a, he's less a threat like if you're not exactly. related to him and you step aside you're not really in danger and that's what i what i love about it not being is like you just said you know mm. it, it, it makes him so much more dangerous you know um so i i yeah i'm i, I guess i am more of a fan of, of the non-sister storyline i mean of course, I love Halloween too. I mean, how can you not? I mean, Halloween too is, you know. Yeah, I always say two and three film, go back and forth is my favorite sequels. Halloween two uh, could have been a as good as a film, even if the sister storyline was out. Like you just oh, find yeah. a way to bring That's him true. to the hospital, and she's there. It could have worked anyway. And John Carpenter said it uh, again and again. He he was drunk as hell when he wrote that. He had no choice. He was forced by the studios to write it. And he had no idea what to do because in his mind, Halloween was an, an encapsulated story. By the end of the first Halloween, the story oh, yeah. ends. That's how he always intended that. Yeah. And, it, and it's a perfect ending. And in this multiverse choose your own adventure of Halloween. I mean, that's the first timeline is I always say that's the first timeline is watch the first movie and stop and stop. And that's, yep. that's, that's timeline. Number one, timeline number two, you can go on to part two. You can, you can stop and you there. can stop there as well. Yeah. And that's a good stop. A third option, you know, you can continue from part two and skip to part four. You know, you could just take part three as its own thing or go from part one to part three and just stop with those two. And, and that's possibilities are not endless, but numerous. Yeah, you yeah, have options. There, there's a lot so of options. many, so many um, options and different. Uh, yeah, different choose your own adventure options. Mm -hmm. So people are complimenting, but they're not asking questions. Yes, I guess I must be very clear in what I say. I, I think so, and and usually, like the last couple of weeks, I, I end up asking all all of them. I think the questions a lot of people <laughs> want to ask, and so it's my fault for uh, for for wanting to interview you. And <laughs> but uh, yeah, a lot of kind no com compliments. Uh, Mike says I kind of feel like people like Dominic and other fans are making these fan films truly know what fans want, as opposed to people in Hollywood. But we are fans. Like, th there's no better person to make a film than a fan. It's from a fan to the fans, and we understand the the the, the source material. We love the source material. We respect it. We're not paid to do that, so <laughs> th there must be love somewhere. Yeah, it's long yeah. hours. Huh? If if I didn't love what I do, God, I would be sad and I would be dead. Actually, those are excruciating hours. It takes will and determination to get through that. Hey, it's 25 minutes that took a year to make. A year, man. That and and again, I mean, like you said, it's you're putting your day job on hold essentially for for most of that time. It sounds like you're funding it all yourself, um, and that's that's as much as you know you'd put in on any other type of. Uh, but I've never been into something as much as I've you know, been now. Any other short film, really. Um, let's see. One of our channel members, Andromeda, uh, just gave us a $2 super chat and has a question. Okay, bring it on. Hit me. Which part of the OG film affected you most intensely? And this is from Andromeda. Uh, I'd say the closet scene. Like yeah. it's, a, it's a closed space. There's nowhere to go. It's very dramatic. She, she's lying on, the, on her back. And all that's keeping evil out is a, a, a hair elastic, or I don't know what, that she used to, to tie those two doorknobs. Yeah. She's in a box, and she can't go anywhere. So that scene is um, very unnerving. And when I saw that as a, as a kid, when he burst through that, and he, he get tangled with the, the chain of the light, so it turns on, it turns off, you hear him breathe, and his eyes luck on her oh fuck man he's really on a mission there he's bursting through doors to get her he's really sure. determined and he doesn't know her that's what that's the scariest part he's not a, re a re on a revenge mission or a, he doesn't have a grudge against her he's just do he's just doing his thing but you don't know yeah. why she didn't she didn't do anything to him 
yeah, he's just fixated for no reason. And and I always say that people that oh they want they they want to say well why why well, if you're asking why you're kind of kind of missing the point sometimes. I have another part that was uh, very, I think, messed up in the first one. Mm -hmm. When he stalks Tommy Doyle at school. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's there. The, the, the three kids that are uh, bullying uh, Tommy Doyle start running. One of them run into Michael. Uh, kids run away. And then you see him. The way his hand moves on the, um, on the fence. Mm -hmm. And he walks at the same pace as the kid walks. He gets in the car. And he drives along with him for, for a little while. Why? Again, there's no reason, no, uh, yeah. no meaning behind that. That was sick. He doesn't kill kids usually, yeah. but he was really stalking Tommy there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Let's see. Um, I saw there was another. Uh, oh, yeah. Tim Leo has a question. How did you find such a great mask? That that is a good. I was going to ask you that about about the mask. Yeah, what can you tell us? Uh, until two or three years ago, I didn't know about mask reholders. Mm -hmm. uh, I was um, I was really curious. If, when when the Halloween Kills came uh, came in theater, mm -hmm. it was I think October fifteenth, twenty twenty one. Uh, a week later, my good friend Simon, who I told you earlier, uh, he organized a haunted house for Halloween with his kids, and he asked me, "Hey, come, come on in to to scare the kids of the neighborhood." So I had to to to, to dress, and I hadn't dressed. Uh, I had put on a costume for years, and as I just watched Halloween Kills, ah, dressing up as Michael Myers would be reminiscent of my high school years. So I I ordered the the trick or treat uh, studio mask. Um, Spirit Halloween. It costs like what, eighty bucks. The mold is good, uh, but it's glowy. The hair is kind of a mess. You have that glued line of hair here. Uh, doesn't look really good in the end. The shape of it, the mold of it is good. Uh, so I, I'm looking online, and I, I, I think because I, I did some research to find a mask, some ads on YouTube showed me mask reholing. So, huh? I looked a little bit into that, uh, and I even considered for a minute, oh, maybe I could try to rehaul mine. So I started watching the video, and after not even two minutes, no, I'm not doing that. It's way too complex as a process, but people does. So I went on eBay. Is there any way I can find a mask? And I think Nick Mulganoa, sorry for the name, uh, at an auction. I tried to get it, I didn't. And it's a good thing because the auction ended up like 800 bucks. Uh, those yeah. masks cost a lot. Yeah. But then it got me thinking, maybe he's not the only one doing that. So after a little research, I found out that a few reolers live uh, in the States, not so far from here. Mm -hmm. I started following them on, on Instagram. One of my favorite was uh, Danny Caraballo. Um, his uh, username on Instagram is darkness.reigns and he's probably the, best, the master when it comes to the 1978 look because in the recent years most reolers focus on the recent trilogy so the aged mask but my favorite has always been the 1978 nothing beats that not even the CGI mask in H20 right <laughs> and um I tried to to connect and reach out to some of those reholders, but they wouldn't reply. And one night, uh, I think it's April 2022, I'm just, you know, shuffling, scrolling around on Instagram and Darkness Reigns just post a story of a rehaul mask he just finished and it's for sale. And I was amazed because I really thought they only worked for commissions. I mean, with hoarders. They would only make masks when they get orders. Yeah. But he made one and he put them out there on sale. It, and it was not an auction. It was first one to, to hit me up, uh, you get the mask. And um, compared to what I saw on other websites, the price was very fair. Yeah. So I, I wrote to him, take that off right now. It's mine. Just give me a few minutes to set up a PayPal account and it's mine. Yeah. And uh, he got my messages and he, he sold it to me. And it came in uh, less than a month later. And when I took it out of the box, oh, a piece of art. I was even yeah. more pumped and excited about doing my, my fan film. So Danny has been uh, pivotal to, to, to the project. And while we were making the first film, 
uh, my actor was uh, was doing a little bit of Nick Castle of himself. He wasn't super gentle with the mask. So the mask st started to flake in the neck because of the paint selling, because we were mm -hmm. manipulating him not so gently. And even when I was doing the first one, possibility of a sequel was already there. I didn't have my idea yet. I was focused on the story of the first one. Yeah. But just in case, I was already stressing out, uh, what, what can I do to avoid... Uh, the degradation to keep going. But one, once it started, uh, it's flaking. There's not much you can do unless you send it back to the reeler. It will take off all the paints and redo it, which would be costly. So I reached out to Danny. I explained him the situation to ask him for advices. What, what could or should I do? Mm -hmm. And the poor guy, it was not his fault, but he felt so bad. He told me, dude, I'm going to send you another one. It's on me. But then I told him, that's the best news ever because I plan to make a sequel, perhaps. And from the, the material I already posted for the first one, which he really dug. Yeah. And I kept him in the loop. I would give him some insights on set, like uh, behind the scenes photos, because he was involved by, by, by selling me the mask. So he told me, if you're making another one, I will make the best mask I, I have ever done. Oh, and man. It takes, it's, it's techniques... Uh, refined during the following year. So he really told me, dude, the mask I'm working on is the is the next best thing. Well, it's the best thing. Like the eyes shape yeah. were perfect because when you buy Trick or Treat Studio mask, they're not all exactly the same. But right. that specific one was amazing. You can see the bad boy behind me. Uh, <laughs> his, painting, his painting technique evolved as well. And he sent me that thing. And when I put the mask next to each other, they both look good. But the new one is crazy amazing. So I don't think I would have made my fan films if I couldn't get my hands of a quality mask. Because mm -hmm. let's be honest, we always say, oh, it's about the characters, not Michael Myers. When the mask doesn't work, you don't get involved in the story. Like it, it takes you off. I love Halloween 4 but I cannot get into the story because every time I see that weird looking mask, mm -hmm. it takes me off and I'm not in the film. I'm in my living room watching a screen, but yeah. when the mask is right and the storytelling is good, I'm in there with the characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The mask. I mean, yeah, like you said, I mean, it, it's got to, you got to nail it. It's got to be a right. Deal breaker. They better nail it for the series. Yeah. Yeah, with the with the TV series, that's yeah, that's they're gonna have to. Uh, well, maybe hire Christopher Nelson again, maybe. Uh, to, to Actually, produce. I'm um, I'm afraid they they will try to make a bold move, as it's a creative reset. Do you think they they might be bold enough to come up with a different mask or a different look for the character, or even imagine no Michael Myers? And I say that because uh, I think two or three years ago. They made a uh, TV series based on I Know What You Did Last Summer. No fishermen. No fishermen to be found. Yeah. Don't do that yeah. with the new Halloween series, please. Yeah, I don't know. I don't... I mean, at this point, we don't know. We've got those comments from Merrimax recently um, that, yeah, they say it's a creative reset and going back to the characters of 78 and maybe some characters that they haven't really focused much on. You know, I mean, I said uh, uh, right after is that it, came out. Is it my, textual? Did they say they were going back to 78 or to the characters of 78? The character. Yeah, they haven't specifically Doesn't said mean the same thing. Set the 78, right. It could be Laurie, Annie, and Linda, but in modern day. It's the characters of 78, but it's a creative reset. Oh, imagine okay. they make a, a young Loomis. That would be weird, right? Well, if it's done right, I could see it. If, if you know, oh. you'd have to have the right actor, of course. But it's if they're stressful. gonna do anything with Loomis, that's gonna be so key. Is they gotta have the right actor for that? Like, if, if they're to gonna be, do anything um, with that character, which I, would I wouldn't be, uh, be surprised if they do do something with the Loomis. It would be character. nice if he was more central this time. He was a supporting character in uh, in the Halloween films. It was always yeah. about the main victims, and he was a supporting character. Like, it would be cool to see something that is a little bit more the focus. I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if it's more focused on Loomis. Mm. And and I floated the idea the other week, last week, I think, 
that what if even, you know, and I don't know if they'll go back to 68 or 63 and 78. They might just kind of retell it in a modern setting, maybe. I don't know, but I Or go really in the 90s because it's easier to recreate. It they might did be, that with, it might uh, be that. I mean, I can, with see him, I can see him doing it modern day to avoid having to make it a period piece. But I, I floated the idea that maybe it's like, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Myers and Judith focused, like right up the months, weeks before that Halloween. Mm. And, and I mean, I don't know. I mean, this is just my fan theory, but I, I just think it would be cool. And you tell me what you think, but if like, it's almost focused on Judith, right? Like she's the central character, but we fans know what it's building up to. And like Michael's there is like the little brother, but like maybe we barely see him, but there's little hints of what we know is going to go down. And I think they could in intro a young Loomis then. And then I really think if they were to do it right, like really do it right and, and make us fall in love with Judith, and have the, the end of season one be the murder of Judith and just gut everybody. Like, I mean, we fans, of course, are going to be knowing it's coming. Mm -hmm. But if, if they were to tell that story and then long term, what they're doing is introducing really our new Loomis character who they'll they'll pick up in the movies in a few years with like more of the story we know. So of like every series would be limited series and it would be That's, like one beat of the film, but yeah, more expanded. Like a, yeah. Like a beat counting down to like his breakout from Smith's Grove basically. Mm. And, but, but that first season, you know, had it all, all about Judith and her boyfriend and all that. And, and then the next season we could see aftermath from that. And, and it, Michael's it, parents, they've never, I don't if know, the it, mask doesn't make an appearance in the, within <laughs> the first season, people will go will go mad. People or, will go crazy mad. You're probably right. So the one way you could work around that is you have two story, two time frames happening. Oh. Have have your adult Michael storyline that maybe kicks things off so we know he's back, and then do like a lot of flashback stuff, and then work it back up to like a little modern day stuff. Again. I, I might be, you know, we might just be, but, you know, this is all we've got right now are these comments from Merrimax. The fact it's not that, much, but there's something. That it's, yeah, it's not much, but it's a little, and, and it's, we're just speculating and spitballing as fans, but. That's what they want. As long as we talk about it, it keeps the, the, the thing alive and we are looking forward to it. They, they, they need the audience. So they, they want said, us to talk about it. I mean, it. Helwig said, one of his comments was that it's a priority for them and that it's fast track. So I'm, I think realistically, I mean, I don't think it's going to premiere this, this Halloween. I think next Halloween, it'll be mm. on the air, but I do think pretty soon we're going to hear, cause he, he more or less said they're very close to locking in the creative team. So I'm thinking, you know, it's supposed to be a series. So now I've, all the series have a showrunner, you know? So I'm thinking we're going to have a, like a showrunner and, and a writer or a writing team, and and maybe the what network if it's going to be streaming if it's going to be on net, you know regular broadcast network or any of that I I'm thinking that that stuff's probably going to be coming fairly soon. Um, I'm really I, I can't wait. Oh, I'm really excited about it. I can't wait. I'm super stressed though. Uh, when you go to TV, it's kind of a downsizing, huh? And if they actually plan to go back to '78, they they better get the budget because recreating that won't be cheap. Renting old cars, uh, recreating furniture and home staging that really feels that way. You need money to do that. And usually when you're in television, the budgets are limited. So I really hope it's not going to be something cheap, more yeah. dialogue oriented when they tell what happens instead of showing it because it's way cheaper to shoot that way. Like yeah. it would be nice if it was really not action packed, but things happen. They're not told. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to feel about the fact that they, they want to go back again to those same characters. I In a way, it's reassuring because within those 13 films, the first storyline with Laurie Stold is the one that works the best. Mm -hmm. 
if you take Halloween 4 alone, it was something else and it was cool. But it was the beginning of the torn thing. And yeah. it, it's a bit nonsensical to me. And I, I like my Halloween more grounded in reality. Uh, those films were kind of getting more and more campy. Mm -hmm. So you feel at home when it's the storyline of Laurie Strode. But at this point, though, it's been told so many times. Yeah. So I would really love if they kind of took a risk and mm -hmm. told something new. Yeah. But it might anger a lot of fans that just want to feel comfortable and wear their own their old slippers because they feel like at home and that's all they want. So I don't know. I don't know if they, they will just go with the bigger audience. I, I I hear your fears on on the downsizing. The only reason I think it it could work now is because TV and especially with streaming, it's you know it's so big right now, and there are like um, shows that are theatrical level shows. You know, if it you know if it were on something like Max or something with the, like the budget of like. You know, they're not going to get Game of Thrones budget, but, you know, like a, a big budget and really do it right. There's I mean, one thing that helps me sleep, the idea that it's going to TV. It's Bates Motel. They kind of yeah. did the same thing. They took a very tiny story with not much to expand on. And they, and they made five yeah. seasons of 10 episodes each with a very high production value. And the story yes. was engaging from end from uh, from be, from beginning to end. So if they managed to do that with Psycho, they could do that with Halloween. So I would perhaps approach. Was it Damon Damon Q's? Uh, he worked on Lost and uh, yes, he went to so. on that. I don't know. I would have a have a talk with him maybe. Like, do you have I ideas? I totally agree. I agree. I mean, it's I've possible. I've I've cited Bates Motel before as an example of how you could do basically another prequel, but, and don't remake it exactly. Like Bates Motel didn't remake the Psycho story exactly, but they Have you watched the did. entire series? Oh yeah, yeah. I watched it and I loved it. And So I, spoiler I, alert, by the yeah. by season five, um, Marion, played by, played by Rihanna, comes yeah. to the motel. And at some point she's in the shower yep. and she doesn't die. And it's the bastard boyfriend who dies in the shower. So yeah. they subverted our expectations while servicing us with something that we felt comfortable with. That and was I, very smart writing. I thought it was brilliant the way they did that. And yeah, I'm sure it pissed off plenty of people that wanted to see, you know, Marianne get slept. But I thought it was smarter to do it that way. Like you said, exactly the, what you said. They Would have been a cheap reaction. But at the same time, they're they're giving us something we can still latch on to and, and mm -hmm. recognize that they are paying homage. And I the think only, if, if they approached... My only fear is that, that way, um, Bates Motel is very much of a character study. You see yeah. the, the psychological evolution of Norman oh, yeah, Bates. Yeah. Michael Myers, there's no much room if you want to keep the character mysterious. So you, you would have to expand on the rest of the characters. I think that would be the thing. And there, there's your Loomis story there. We we get to watch Loomis develop from this, what I would imagine is, a, you know, like like I've said before, if they could do a week-to-week -week in Smith's Grove, then they could literally be bringing in different crazy people and have Loomis help The shape them. could be in the background. The shape could be there, yeah. but not the main character and he shows up from time to time and he's yes he, en he ends up being linked to the other storylines yeah it's not yes. all have about him mentioned him. always have him mentioned and acknowledged he's not there never and you don't not know. really focused on because it could get sold fast otherwise if he's yeah. always there always eluding and always restarting i don't know how, how believable is it if uh, there's 20 episodes and in the 20 episodes the shape is always there he always escapes right you, you and I know what you believable. say, and I know exactly what you say. There's going to be a lot of fans that, yeah, they, you got to have the mask, you got to have Michael killing, and and maybe they accomplish it by flashbacks or something. But but I do think they could get a lot of mileage out of a Loomis development where it's not really Michael focused, but Michael is 
a constant presence. Like he should be a presence. Yeah, I like what you said about uh, making Judith the main character. It, it it got me thinking. They could make the character a little younger. She's still older than Michael, mm -hmm. but she's a little younger. So she's the first witness of the darkness growing into her brother. Yeah. But when she tells, people don't believe her. Yeah, nobody's. And she's living the a, some kind of a cat and mouse story in her in her own house. That would be a cool storyline to to start with. Well, and I got thinking, and again, we'll take some more viewer questions, guys. Hang tight. But yeah, now I'm just we're, we're spitballing. But based on Mark Helwig's comments from Merrimax when he talked about some of these characters that maybe we haven't really focused on, my mind started going to who are characters in '78 that they've never really well. Okay, well, Loomis they focused on, but not lately. So he he's a candidate, but but I'm thinking even deeper. Like like I said, like Michael's parents. I mean, other than Rob Zombie, a little bit, nobody's ever really focused on that. Oh, uh, you don't want to go the trash house route. No, yeah, no, 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 no. You no, want they wouldn't go ordinary that. people. But it would be very interesting to see. Yeah. you know, and and the the weeks leading up to that Halloween. I mean, what if the whole series like the first 10 episodes is october 1 to october 31st and it's just and that's our countdown we know that it's getting closer to halloween and yeah if they cast some unknown actress and who's awesome and make us fall in love with judith while all of us fans know what's coming on halloween and we know they're going to build to this but yet spend so much time with her and like you said let the parents be so normal is ridiculous. Like, how could this evil but, uh, normal but kind? Us? You want to root for them as well, even if they don't yeah. believe. You want to get invested, and you have to have likable characters. Yeah, and then Not it's even more assholes. inexplicable when when he goes, but but still drop maybe some foreshadowing and some seeds that, like you said, maybe only Judith picks up on. Mm. You know, the way only Loomis and Tommy Doyle recognize that this is the boogeyman in the original film it's it's them too that recognize it until laurie at the very end ag finally agrees oh that was the boogeyman one like, see yeah, i'm getting yeah. excited now i think they should consult us actually i think so i think let, I think let we're damon cues enjoy his martini and come to us i think so we, we got I, you hollywood i think we just broke this story i mean <laughs> it well you mentioned bates motel and i i've mentioned that regular viewers know i've mentioned that many times as like that was so good, A way good, you man. can remix the story. You don't have to be 100% faithful, but you can be faithful enough to where it's still a In the tone everything. and spirit. They, yes. they were faithful in tone and spirit. They, they kept the the bones. A weird mom, uh, a yes. troubled kid, and they went from there. They they created the character of the brother, which was cool. I, yeah. I really enjoyed what the brother would uh, would bring to the table. I, I really too. thought he, he would die at some point. And again, subverted. He's the one who... Uh, yeah. Like very, you said, very there was writing. so much subverting expectations, but I enjoyed it. I thought, and if Halloween can do that, like give us what we know we want, but still surprise us and shock us, you know. No easy task. I will say that. It's no easy task. But oh, yeah. they really need to hire the right persons to write that. And those well, persons need to love that franchise. And that's why I am honestly surprised. I'm pleasantly surprised, but to hear them say fast tracked and and you know priority and all that, I like it. But I'm also like, all right, I don't. Is it a money grab? I'm. I'd rather wait for for the right people. Do they want to get but, this out as fast as they can so it eludes Halloween ends a little bit because they kill the character and they want to bring in alive and we forget about that? Not because it's a bad movie. We, right. They want us to forget about the fact that he died. But if they rush it, it's more of a cash grab than a artistic piece of work. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I want hopefully that's not, good. that's not what's going on. But I think the next bit of news we get is probably going to be some the key stuff that's going to shape this, which I think is going to be like the showrunner for lack of a better term or, mm. or like the key writing team. I think these are going to be, um, you know, the key decisions that, you know, are we in good hands or not? Cause there are people that can do it. And, and like we've talked about, you know, with fan films, if they get people that are passionate about it and come at it as fans and with the knowledge of, of everything that's worked in the past and everything that hadn't, you know, and there are ways to 
like we're talking about. Give us what we want, but still surprise us and and give us it's a balance. Subvert it. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge, like you said. It's not going to be easy. And with this fan base, you know, um, they're, they're going to let you know real quick. But um, They're vocal of what they like and what they don't. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But but it can be done for sure. And I'm excited. I, I keep saying this is kind of the most exciting time since they announced what would become the 2018 film. Like, even before they announced Jamie Lee Curtis was in it, when they, they just did that picture, it was Carpenter and Malika Cod and uh, Jason Blum. And when that picture dropped and they said, hey, we're, we're doing this, stay tuned, it was like the most exciting time. It took forever it, to come, though decades. I waited for that first trailer for 2018 for ah, so long. <laughs> it, was, it was a magical time. I mean, when it, I mean, just the poster drop was unbelievable. Like, yeah, just, yeah. that first shot of the mask on the poster... And we I love it that, a, a that they just put for it nine right years. up there. It was that? very simple, but the aesthetic was good. And you felt, oh, it, it is in line with what with the original. And you see that through the simplicity of the poster. Yeah. Less is more, always. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do we have any other questions there? Let's see. Let's see what we have over here. Um, I've, I've been um, in, enraptured in our uh, pitch for the series that... Uh, Let's see. Um, I think a lot of people are agreeing with our um, our pitch. Silent Shadow go. Productions has checked in. Loved Halloween Stalks too. Me and my team made a fan film as well. You guys check it out. All right. Well, we'll check it out. Silent Shadow Productions. What's the title? Yeah, give us the uh, the title of it. Silent Shadow. Um. Rob says they should never say why Michael snaps and that needs to remain a mystery. Yeah. Yeah. You got they it, Rob. Explain it. Oh, yeah. they need to not explain it, actually. Right. And that would be the, the development of Loomis. We would watch him to go from being this kind of idealistic, like I can I can help people and, and help anybody. And and you could show him helping other patients and really helping them there get uh, there is your character study show his successes but always is, there's um, this one that he just can't he just can't crack and, and his obsessive him. side for the shape must yes. be a an extent of an obsessiveness he has in him so that would be a a cool character study if you put it centered and he's full of flaws Perhaps he yes. drinks, he is yes. on the brink of divorce, he doesn't sleep well, he makes mistakes, I don't know. And then people don't believe him because they believe he's crying wolf because it came many times before. Yes. That would be good. And if and, and, and I said this last week, it, it occurred to me, this is the way, because they, they went with Merrimax. I think the key was, because they already had the movie deal in place with Merrimax. And I really think it was like, look, Let's keep it all in the same house. That way we can, because I always said, I don't think they're necessarily going to do like, you know, shared universe and all that stuff. I think it's more like, let's make a show and maybe we take a character or two from the show into the movie. Maybe the show isn't even about our main character from the movie, but maybe it's in there. So what I'm saying is maybe they kind of backdoor Loomis in on season one where it's all, mm. it's all Judith heavy and it's all, Meyer's parents heavy and then as the you know after our main character is murdered Judith then Loomis kind of becomes our main character as we're following him as the show for a few years which is all setting up our new Loomis hero for when we finally get back to the big screen and it's no longer Smith's Grove it's no longer little kid Michael now we're back to a full grown Michael and an obsessed Loomis and we've watched Loomis How about that? over a couple of years. Loomis is already involved in the Myers' life. And he's the only one who believes Judith. And when she gets killed, he takes it on him. And it's the drama, it's the drama of his life. And that's why after that, he becomes so um, obsessive about, uh, about the boy. Oh, yeah, there's something there. Huh? We're brainstorming here. We're just yeah, throwing maybe, ideas. Maybe there's even something Judith, there. Maybe, yeah, maybe even Judith. Yeah, he... They sent her to see him at one point because she was talking crazy talk or something. Or you're, you uh, got it, man. Yeah, that's 
yeah. All right, all right, Malik Akkad, Merrimax. All right, guys, um, we're we're available. We're available to take your calls anytime. And we uh, love this franchise, guys. So absolutely, we'll do we'll do it justice. Absolutely, I I think this would be the way to go. Personally, I mean, if they want to go back to the original roots, yeah, I think so. The the, I mean, the three girls, uh, Laurie, Annie, Linda, we love them. It's rehash a little bit. If we go back with them again, it's a little a little rehash. And you could even do, I mean, because yeah, possibilities are endless, but just like Bates Motel did, I imagine they would work in familiar names like Bracket and you know, just some of these other names that we know from the franchise. They could work that stuff in. Ben Tramer, just you know, just Phelps he, will be there all, yes. all the time. Uh, Phelps yes, here, yes. Phelps there. Hanfield Memorial. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you could, Dr. Mixter. I mean, you could have so much oh, that you good. could just yeah. mix in and come in and out and, and just all the Easter eggs that they could work in there. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Ben Tremor is the one that we have less heard about. So it would be cool to, to give him a, a proper storyline. Yeah, I thought we were going to get a little more of him in ends for, for a little while, but no, nope, they didn't go that route. Perhaps it's like an inside joke. We always mention him, but we never show him. We never tell anything <laughs> more about him. I think so. Are you still looking for questions? I'm, I'm, scrolling, I'm scrolling back up to see um, if I missed some. Oh, um, City Kitty was asking, where can these films be watched? I did link Halloween Stalks 2 in the description of this video, but tell everybody the name of your uh, channel where they can Oh find my God, it's, it's pretty easy. <laughs> the channel is named Halloween Stocks. I, I want it to be very easy go. to find. So if you type Halloween Stocks on, uh, on YouTube, uh, it will bring you to, to, to the two films, to the trailers, to the tracks of the original score that I shared as well. There's some behind the scenes videos. There's a lot of stuff there. But yeah, the films will pop up right away. Very it's free. Cool. It's there for you to enjoy. And it's all located in one place. Very cool. Byron has a question. He's asking. Uh, yep, I was going to ask this too. So uh, this is a good question. Might be obvious, but will we see Halloween Stops 3? Um, I've been on the on the Halloween Lives podcast a few days ago. It was a pre-recording, so the episode is coming this Friday. And we talked about that. So I will just state that they got the, not the news, but the information first. Uh, so I'll just repeat myself here. I don't know yet because um, I just spent a year solely focused on the story of part two. Uh, it took a toll. Like right now, my creative mind is still set on that. I need to take a step back and I need to catch my breath a little. I need to take perhaps a few months off just to reset my creative mind so it becomes a blank canva again and new ideas can come. That being said, making fan films is a very costly thing to do. Uh, you don't make money out of them, of course, obviously, for reasons we know. We don't own the rights on the, the IP. Uh, people who make fan films with that level of quality, uh, it's pretty rare. Right now, there are a few, and most of them try to fund those films with Indiegogo campaigns. I tried that with my second one. I was really hoping that the financial help would be there. It wasn't really. I understand that um, to make a campaign like that work, you, you need to push it pretty much every day. And I was carrying the film already. So I, I put it out there and I hoped it would work by letting it do its own thing. Didn't really work out. Um, the two the two Halloween stocks filmed together, I, I think I invested in the neighborhood of 25 Ks, 25 Gs to make uh, those two yeah. films. Um, I put myself in financial risk because I really believed in the project. And it's something I really wanted to experience. Yeah. But I cannot go that route for, for a third time. And I really doubt if I try again to put a Indiegogo campaign out there, I doubt it will really bring what I need to, to assure that level of quality. 
Mm -hmm. And I would need a pretty good amount because I've been working with the same crew twice. And those are experienced film workers. And they accepted to, to, to join in two times. They won't do it for free uh, a third time around. And just to give you an idea, Halloween Stocks 2 uh, required eight nights of filming and a lot of gear. That costs money. So I, I said the same thing to the Duncan brothers. If anyone right now wants to write me a check of 50 case, send it to me and I'll start working on the film on the third film tomorrow. I, I, I will work nights to, to come up with a worthy story. But as it is now, I don't know. I can tell. Right now, it's unlikely. But perhaps in a month or two, a new idea will emerge and then it will just live in me and I will absolutely have to get it out. I don't know. I would love that. I, I, I love Haddonfield. Very cool. Awesome. Well, I, and again, I mean, that's a testament to your passion. And, and, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on here is that, you know, I mean, these things, it's blood, sweat and tears and, and money too, you know, it's, it's all of that. And, um, and yeah, it's fun, you know, it's that, you know, it, but it, it does, um, take its toll in different ways. So, yeah, I mean, I, I hear you on all of that. I, I set uh, a very high goal to myself with the second one because I wanted to make something that would feel legit cinematic. I really wanted to make not a fan film, but a movie you would watch in the cinema. Yeah. To achieve that, it requires a lot of work and a lot of experienced people. And I wouldn't want to downgrade. I, I couldn't make a third one. That wouldn't be better yeah, than yeah. the second one. And that's another thing. I think that the story I, I, I told with the second one ends so perfectly. Oh, yeah. Uh, how can I top that? Like, where do I bring that next that it's even more intriguing and captivating? It's not impossible, but I would need to really take my time to think something true. I wouldn't want to rush just to make a third one because people ask for If I do it, it needs to be a story yeah. I really want to tell that's that's in a bit in a bit thing me uh, I really need to get up you know oh and that that final shot too I mean people that have seen <laughs> it know what I'm talking about but I love that that final shot and what you're paying homage to and just and just really kind of how the story kind of you know comes in a, in a big circle in a lot of ways if, if you think about it um yeah and that I final love shot was the first one we filmed um, that was the first, first one Okay. First filming night was October 19. We started with that one. It took four hours to nail. But those four hours were used to set the thing, uh, rehearse the choreography with the different actors, and uh, get the kid to act the way I needed him to act. I mean, work with a seven-year-old kid with that kind of heavy material. Yeah. That's oh, I, a I challenge. It. Thank you. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed writing it. It was fun. But... Seeing it unfold in real life on set that night, that was that was crazy. So, something I will never forget. And the render of that on screen works so nicely. Oh my god, it's smooth, it's creepy, yeah, and it feels, I think, satisfying. Mm -hmm. As a fan, again, I, I told that to my friend the Duncans. I made the Halloween film I would want to watch. Yeah. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, I loved it, and and I loved uh, his pajamas too. Having the silver shamrock uh, masks on it, the the little boy's pajamas. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, uh, I I reached out to uh, one. I I cannot forget his name. That's stupid. It, it's so late now. Uh, his IG name. I will make him a, a proper shout out. But uh, it's an artist I, I follow on on Instagram, and I reached out to him. I need I need vector images of those mm -hmm. three masks. And I was really rushed in time because I, I had cast the kid, the, the kid actor, uh, very late in the process. And I couldn't make the pajamas I intended to make without having my kid, my kid, my, my, my child actor, because I, I need him to know what size he wears. Yeah. Um, so time was passing by and I really wanted those pajamas. They're not pivotal to the story, but it's a very nice nod, right? Yeah. Um, so I reached out to this uh, to, to this artist online and uh, Jack Malone, his name. And within a matter of a day, he, he, 
he sent me those three pictograms that I then sent to a shop that prints on uh, the fabric you choose. Then they shipped the fabric to me, express, because I really needed right away. We're shooting in a week. Then I brought those fabric to a tailor that assembled the, the two pajamas together. Mm -hmm. We were filming outside, so one of the pajama was regularly made, but the other one had um, more uh, more layers in it. So if you look carefully, sometimes the pajama look a little bit bulkier, but I didn't want the kid to wear a coat outside, yeah. but I didn't want him to freeze to death. Huh? When we shoot right. late October, it can get uh, very cold that night. We've been lucky that we never really froze, but still. Uh, but yeah, those pajamas end up working very nicely. It's not in your face. It's just a little nut, but it yeah. shows homage to another right. film in the franchise. I love the original, but I love the entire franchise. Yeah, yeah, same here. And I love those masks, too. Um, yeah, we've got another question from Andromeda, um, the super chat. She wants to know, what would you like to ask Nick Castle? Did you like my films? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's an homage to him. Uh, it's an homage to John Carpenter, but the portrayal yeah. of the shape is the OG shape. I mean, there were several actors throughout the series. And yeah. um, shout out to them sometimes to bring something new. Uh, I heard in an interview that uh, Chris um, in H20, Chris, uh, Chris Duran, Yes. Didn't watch the original when he when he crafted the part, so he he really put himself in the role. He he did his own thing, which is good. Yeah. But most of those actors based their performance on the original. On Nick, yeah. Nick did his own thing. Lucky enough, he what I heard is that he he comes from a a family of dancer. His father was a dancer yep. that danced with Fred Astaire. So they, they all gracious. They all move graciously. Like it, it's in him. And he he infused that into, into the role. Because again, in interviews, I remember John Carpenter would never give him any direction. Like he would Nick yeah. would ask John, what's the <laughs> intention of my character? Go there, walk towards me. Right. That's the only thing. The only direction he got is when he stabbed Bob to the wall, lean your head. Okay, lean oh, on yeah. the other side. And then he, he wouldn't explain to Nick why. So Nick had to just do what he he felt was the good thing to do. He, he went, um, not organically, but intuitively. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I tried to pay homage to, to Halloween, but to Nick Castle himself. D did, you, did you enjoy the treehouse scene? Yeah. When uh, there's a jump scare there, right? He's, uh, he's in the door. It's a very quick shot, but if you if you freeze that shot, you will see that the character of the kid named Nicholas, he made the three house his own, and he he wrote his name on the wall next to that to that door. So when we frame it and you see the shape looking at them, the word Nick is written on the wall. It's very subtle, and you, I didn't want it to be in your face, but it's an homage to to the Very best cool. shape there is. So yeah, if I ever meet Nick Castle and I'm lucky enough he watched my films, I really want to know what he thought about it. Very cool. That's and it's those details like that, just putting those little little details in there that, you know, repeat viewings and stuff. Yeah. That that adds um, you know, layers that that not every fan film has. Carefully crafted, man. There are plenty of references to the Halloween franchise, and even to other films. Absolutely. Um, let's see here. Um, um, where is... Uh, I saw one a minute ago. Or no. Oh, the costume showing up. They're very chatty on there. Huh? You have to scroll to find questions, but yeah. that means they're very chatty. I don't see, actually. I don't see because I, I didn't open the YouTube page. I wouldn't want the sound to, like, reverb. So uh, oh, yeah. I'm not reading all those all those comments, but it must be a... a yeah, nice everybody's read. enjoying uh, our, our pitch and, and just uh, complimenting you on being so knowledgeable. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate that. Uh, I love that stuff. <laughs> it's easy when you love it. Let's see. Uh, Solid Saturn says, I'm developing a fan film called Halloween Hunts, and it will start production once I have the materials I need. Halloween Hunts. Oh, there's a ring to it. That's cool. That's, yeah, that does have a ring to it, doesn't it? If it's not taken, do the try to save the, the, the domain names or uh, the Instagram name. I was lucky enough with Halloween Stock. It wasn't taken, but try to do the same thing with Halloween Hunts if it's not already taken. Mm -hmm. That's good advice. Mike Johnston says, um, this is scrolling back up, but that's why Halloween Stocks 1 and 2 were well done. It was a continuation of the 78th story without the same old characters like we were mm. talking about. It was a new story with a creepy stalking Michael Myers at night. And yeah, like the for, one and for only everything we, we talked about, yeah. Let's see. Uh... Now, um, we do do these polls uh, every week. And um, I guess we'll do our results from last week's poll. And I'll ask you um, the question we asked everybody. Last week we had uh, Douglas Tate on. And he, he appears in Halloween Kills. Uh, he did a little stunt doubling for James Jude Courtney during the SUV scene. What is his name? I didn't get the name. His name's Douglas Tate. Oh, yeah. Well, it's the one who, who played the shape in the, the flashback scene, isn't it? Not in the in the flashback. That's uh, Aaron Armstrong. He he. Right. Oh, it's the bald guy, Douglas Tate. Yes, yes, Douglas Tate, and uh, the SUV. He's like up on the roof on the SUV and, and did ah. that jump and everything. Didn't and, have uh, a wrench uh, stuck yeah. or, or glued to his end this time. Right, right, and and uh, he also played Jason in uh, the last scene of Freddy versus Jason. So we had him on last week, and because he was on and we were talking about Halloween Kills a lot, I asked everybody what their favorite kill from Kills was. Um, so before we go and, and look at the poll results, I'll ask you um, what your favorite kill from Kills is. Oh, yeah, sure. My very pleasure. Um, I'm not that much into gore. I, I'm I'm in two shock factor. Something you either don't expect or you tell yourself, oh, he went really far. And uh, just before he, he attacks that group in the car, yeah, he holds the bloody mask of one of the three young pranksters. And I love that we don't see that kill because we can only imagine how gruesome it was. The mask is bloody, and it's it's a kid. Perhaps a young teenager, but it's a kid. And you see the bloody knife as well. So you know that was put to use. Yeah. So I, I like to imagine like the grim, scary, uh, how scary it was for, for that kid to be to be killed by by this individual. So that would be my favorite kill. The, the only one we don't see, actually. <laughs> that's, that's a great pick, actually, because, yeah, I mean, it does leave so much to your imagination. And like you said, it's a kid. It, yeah, I mean, and all we see is that bloody mask. Um, I was told the the expression "theater of the mind." What you yes, what you imagine is always way worse than what you see. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, theater of the mind. Yeah, that, that that's a great that is a great pick. Actually, I like that. Um, and I actually interviewed um, that kid. He's not a kid now. He's a young man that, that plays Dennis. Um, his name's Jay Gavin Wild, and I interviewed all three of those kids right around when Halloween oh, cool. Kills came out. Yeah, the three kids that wear the masks and all, and they're they're awesome. And um, Dennis, it's Dennis's mask. Yeah, you remember yes. the first name? You're good. Yep, yep. Um, it's Halloween. Right. Everybody's wearing masks. That's it. <laughs> well, the lines are all coming back. That's what it is. Um, so, looking at the results of our poll. Um, and again, I always tell everybody they can write in their answer if it's not among these five options. But five options I put up there, um, I had Cameron, Karen, Vanessa, Marcus, and Tommy. And um, it was really no contest, according to our voters. The, the overall winner with 75% of the total votes is Cameron. 
Yeah, poor bastard. He, he kind of paid for his sins, even if he was trying to make amend this one. Yeah. Uh, like his head goes through the 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 ramp surrounding yes. the the staircase, and at some point, I think you see that it's broken, but there's pointy parts coming from the upper part of that room. When he <sighs> takes him and pull him up, you can only imagine that this wooden pick is going through his back or neck. So, ouch! Before he yeah. turns his head. He really tortures him for uh, for a minute. I think that's what what gets everybody is it is the, the, those added seconds of of the torture and just kind of torturing Allison by torturing him in front of her and, and kind of daring her to to do something, I guess. Um, and yeah, he he kind of yeah. has his redemption arc in kills. I like um, when the the shape does that when he kills someone to mess with someone else. Yes. One of my favorite kills in the in the entire franchise is um, the the counselor Will in H twenty. Oh yeah, he, yeah. He comes from behind him, stick him in the in the flank and lift him, and he just turns his head to his sister sure. and hi. He's really messing with her. I, I'm not a big fan of the sister storyline, but in that scene, yeah, that's mean. Oh damn, that's free. Ouch. So I, I can understand why the the. the the Cameron kill and messing up with uh, with Allison is one of the favorites of the film. Definitely, definitely, and and I can see why too. And and yeah, he he does kind of have that redemption arc. He's not a character I would have thought would rank this high as far as you know, like a sympathetic kill. Um, and then just yeah, the the tied for second place is Vanessa and Tommy. And then um, right down there, Vanessa is, um, she shoots herself. He kicks the door of uh, the nurse. Oh she's played God. by our friend Carmela McNeil. And yeah, she's coming at him and he kicks the door. And the set and choreography her. of that scene is a bit messy, right? Because once she escapes the car, it doesn't make sense how long it takes her to, to come back. She's kind of way over there. You're right. She She's kind of waiting. And once he's done in the car, killing her boyfriend and killing Marion, then she comes back. It's like she ran away and decided to come back. The old timing of the thing kind of doesn't work. And that it is, it is a kind little of weird. Stupid. You're right. It, it is a little weird like that. Um, and I'm not it, a fan of the, of the kill itself, but once she's dead... The way he gets out of the car oh, yeah. and stands and the head tilt again, yes. the way it's lit and framed, that is beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that head tilt is epic in that scene. And I, I love that whole SUV sequence. Um, Karen is in third place. Well, fourth place, I guess. I re if I remember well, Karen, it's like glimpse. We see cuts of her face, cuts of it, but yeah. we don't really see the action. We're kind of too close, right? Yeah. I felt like it was almost kind of like a psycho uh, homage yeah. in a way, you know, because yeah. it's, it's very kind of, like you said, we don't see a lot of it. We we know what's happening. and um, But I always kind of felt like it, it might have been David Gordon Green kind of doing a, a bit of a psycho thing there. Do you think they kind of... Um... Painted them not painted themselves in the corner, but they missed a nice opportunity to 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 show us Laurie's reaction to that. Like they could have made the film last two or three more minutes, and instead of finishing with the kill and the shape breathing while still staring at himself in the window, just finishing on Laurie, your daughter's dead, and she she goes like in cries, and that would set up more of a revenge story for for ends, because that's what would happen anyway. Yeah. You know, should have happened. But I would really have loved to see Jamie Lee Curtis, like, especially knowing that she she was kind of wasted in that film. She was in the hospital, and all her dialogue lines would be nonsense about oh he's evolving or he's um what's the word she always uses when he kills he's, he's transcending. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, so having a, a genuine painful reaction to to the uh, the announcement of the of her daughters that would have been a very a great way to end that second film making make it more emotional yeah my two cents huh 
Yeah, no, that, yeah, definitely. And have you seen the uh, the extended ending where she calls the phone and it's Michael breathing on the other end? It's what even better it? than what they kept. It, it was a, a fun call back to, to a pivotal scene in, in 78 as well. Right. I don't know why they cut that, though. Yeah. And it can be because of length. <laughs> it, 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 it's like 10 more seconds, that scene, right? It's not very yeah, long. Yeah, it's not very long at all. Yeah, it's, yeah, maybe maybe 20 or 25, maybe. But if in any way much. there could have been some sort of contact between the two characters, that would have set up the final confrontation a little bit better. Yeah. But they, that is, they that is like the only thing it was, it was missing. Is Yeah, they don't have interaction. And Lori, like you said, is completely sidelined and they they really lied to us in the trailers huh? when they uh, oh yeah th there is this scene or you in the trailer you see laurie yelling in the hospital Michael! and when you watch the film you know that it's because uh trivoli was there and everybody thinks it's michael myers so that's why she yells the name right. but it really gave the impression that we would see some sort of confrontation especially when in the trailer they also show her uh injecting herself and then taking out the knife she kept it all yeah. it all went to waste. Like you, you established stuff that could have been very um, painful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, Marcus was in fifth place on the poll. So there we go. But yeah, Cameron. Oh, Marcus! Every... He gets a knife in the eye. Come on! Yeah, he should that, have been that's a little a bit good higher. one. Yeah, uh, yeah. I like stuff. Marcus's. And they, they did practical effect with that. Say kudos to, to them. So uh, I would have expected him to not to be the last. Yeah, Vanessa I, should be the last. That was so cartoonish. Yeah. All right. And now we are launching what's well, actually already launched about an hour ago. But uh, this week's poll question, since we're just, again, spitballing and talking about the TV series, and it's all just speculation at this point. I mean, we might wake up tomorrow morning and there's news answering some of these questions mm. or it might happen next week or next month. Who knows? But I do think it's coming, but just for fun, we're asking what network or streaming platform do you think the upcoming TV series is going to air on? And, um, and I threw out some options like Netflix or Max. Please no. Please no. Netflix has the Prime same aesthetics. Video, or um, broadcast networks such as like NBC, in which case it would then stream on Peacock or FX even that does like American Horror Story, in which case then it would stream on Hulu. So I threw those out. You you say definitely not Netflix. When Netflix produces stuff, it all looks the same. Yeah. Every documentary has the same structure and the same visuals. So they, they do the same thing with their fiction. So yeah. if it ends up on Netflix, but it's produced by someone else, okay, that's one thing. I would want Netflix to make those uh, th this series. I, I would go with um, broad, broadcast networks. I think they, mm -hmm. they, they can get good money. They are experienced. Um, and I'll just bring back Bates Motel again. I think it was broadcasted yeah. before going uh, yeah. On I don't know what platform after that, but they did good. So uh, I would go there again. It's a home run with them. Yeah. Yeah, and I do hope that whatever they do it is a, uh, you know, like a weekly episode drop, not like Netflix does where it's all binge watching at one time. Because I, I will, will watch them all like like right away like in we will nights. all do of course yeah yeah i'll devour them in two nights because i can't help myself and uh but i i do kind of miss the days of having that week in between to like think about the episode and i was and talk uh, about it with your friends and and when i was a kid the next one I was a big fan of uh, the series Hercules with Kevin Sorbo. Mm -hmm. Like it was my Sunday night rendezvous that I, I didn't want to miss. Like Hercules and ILS, like they were two heroes that I, I really enjoyed to follow in. Yeah. I was always looking forward for, for Sunday nights and it would always end up way too soon. So I would start waiting for the next Sunday. And there's something genuinely nice in waiting for something because when you get it and it's not easy to find right away 
you right. won't enjoy it the same way. There's a a rarity or something. I'm not English. Uh, I don't speak English as a main language. Sometimes I, I lack some words, but there there's something special about waiting for something for a long time because when it arrives, you really cherish that moment. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I think so too. Um, yeah, we're all sport. Of course, when it was that way, I, I would have said, oh no, I don't want to have to wait a week, you know? And But now that we don't have to wait a week so often, it's like, you know, I kind of miss waiting a week. So I guess we always want what, what we, uh, what we don't have sometimes too. But I, I do agree that, yeah, the anticipation makes it sweeter sometimes. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, how many episodes would you like the series to, to contain? Like total over the whole thing or, or like... In, uh, well, I, I don't know if they plan to make multiple seasons. Let's say it's a limited series. Like okay. it's only one season. How many episodes? Well, I mean, <laughs> of course I'd love to see the more the better, but realistically like you said probably around 10 i mean I, I so many series now especially if they are streaming they don't even do a dozen now it seems like um i mean i'd like I, to see when i was a kid it was always like 22 huh yeah it, buffy it the vampire slayers Dawson's creek stuff like that uh, you know series for the young people it was always like 20 22 24 uh limited series i think it's the best you, you always want more, of course, but you don't stress the elastic. It, it won't yeah. it won't break. You have room enough to really develop your characters. And like and you were saying earlier, less is lines. more. Yeah. So don't push it. Don't make it too long because you want to sell more episodes. If your story requires a weird number like seven episodes, do that. Mm -hmm. Don't stretch to eight because it's a better number to sell. Right. You know? Start from your story and see what it requires. But usually, the shorter, the better. So it's you're more thinking, contained. So you're thinking limited series, seven or eight episodes then? Something maybe like even that. six. Maybe even mm -hmm. six. I'm not going to be popular here. But usually, <laughs> when you're given only six episodes, you will make the best out of them. If they tell you, That's do as many point. episodes as you want, you will get lost. You will incorporate storylines that are not that useful. And like, um, I don't know if you've been a fan of The Walking Dead. Uh, it grew old after season seven. And yeah. those were, I think, longer seasons, like 16 episodes maybe. Yeah. And sometimes you would see characters in one episode and you wouldn't see them before three or four episodes yeah. later. And I don't like that. They, they go in too many places. If you have too much room, you will put more character in that. Mm -hmm. And if you have too many characters, then you kind of lose focus. You need to have a small group of characters. Halloween has always been small scale. Huh? Yeah. You, you won't put Michael Myers in a 30 stories building. You want him in a small neighborhood, mm -hmm. in one tiny house with one family, in a small yeah. group of victims, not an entire high school. Less is more. And if you only have four, five, six, maybe eight episodes, you will make the best out of this time because it's limited, but you want to to tell something worthy. I Again, think my two cents. Yeah, no, I think that's some great points. And yeah, that, um, you know, like we've been talking about, trimming the fat, you know, just just the good stuff. Um, and and yeah, not wasting time on, on the filler. No filler episodes. Yeah, Rob Windsor agrees, exactly. Make four episodes if that's all you got. Um, yeah, if the best is four, then make it, yeah. Then let Depends that be on the it. story you have to tell. If the story requires four, then go four. Go four, four. Yeah. You have a very agreeing community there. I like that. Yes. There. They're yes. like on board with everything we say. Thanks, guys. Yeah, well, you know, they're they're, they're um, pretty much the regular crew. So, yeah, they, uh, you know. Maybe we just make sense as well. What we say is like. I think so. Very sensical. So I think I'll that's take that. what it is. <laughs> <laughs>
up and I see Michael Myers is lurking in the chat silently too, so that's good. Good to see the shape in the house tonight. I have two shapes with me, and you have two shapes with you. That's right. There's a lot of shapes. There's a lot of shapes tonight. That's right. When I when I started my fan film and my small community starting to gather around them, I was amazed at, at how many Michael Myers I have following me. I and bet. sometimes they have Michael Myers of <laughs> a certain location. Yes. But there are a lot of just Michael Myers. Oh yeah, we have a, we we see many Michael Myers. They tag us in their Michael Myers Monday posts and all. And uh, yeah, Michael Myers of New Zealand, Michael Myers of just all over. Yeah. Yeah. Your post has been liked by Michael Myers, Michael Myers, and Michael Myers. Oh, That's cool. it. That's it. That's what it's all about. <laughs> a very popular guy. He wants to remain anonymous, but he's very popular. A serial <laughs> killer. Yes, and he and he's got a lot of um, uh, accounts <laughs> throughout oh, social God, media. Yeah. He's very busy. I don't know how he managed to kill people on top of that. Um. Let's see. It's not a question, but one more comment. Sam Eichner um, loves. The film and loves all the callbacks in your film, like the rotary phone, the car, and the nurse with the Head and Field Memorial Hospital scrubs. His name is Sam? Yes, his name is Sam. Thank you, Sam. Thank you very much for watching both my films and for enjoying them. Made out of love, so share, share, the, share the love, share them as well. But thank you very much for the comment. Yeah. And um, yeah, just a lot of love in, in the live chat. Um, yeah, City Kitty just followed you on Instagram and it says, I think I just see it now. My phone just lit up. Yeah. Yep. That's Sam. Just right now. Hi, Sam. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, they're, they're following you and, and going to be following along. And, uh, yeah, if anybody hasn't watched Halloween Stalks 2 yet, you can find the link in the description of this live stream. And, um, and of course, just follow Halloween stocks on, on YouTube and, uh, and Instagram. Yeah. It's my two, my two sweet spots and Instagram is easy as well. Halloween yeah. stocks. You cannot miss it. You cannot go wrong. Perfect. Perfect. Well, there we go. And, uh, yeah, I see the, the hearts, uh, coming in for it, coming in for it. So again, man, this is, this has been awesome. Um, oh, just yeah. hanging out and, and just, you know. Talking all things about the fires out. Halloween. Yeah, exactly. You know, this is this is what I love to do. Um, you know, so much more than what two we hours, do with man. Halloween Daily is a work of passion too. So it's like uh, we've been chatting for more than two hours, and it didn't it, seem like that. It's just pure fun. It 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 flies by every week. Um, even when I'm here by myself, just yapping, I'm like, how how did I fill two hours just with me yapping? And but it it happens all the time and. And then yeah, when when we were getting going on some of some of our ideas and stuff, I mean, I could I could go longer. I could I could go longer, but we'll save That's it. That's the like high said, of creation, man. Less is more, so we'll, we've got to save a little bit for for your next appearance. I agree, and soon enough, I'll, I'll fall. I'm still Absolutely. catching my breath from from the making of those films. Huh? It's been ten days; it's out, but I'm still promoting it as hell. So the work yeah. is not done, and uh, nights sometimes are short. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, making the time for us. Uh, like I said, this has been fun, and I know we're going to do it again. We'll, we'll have you back on, and, and we'll, we'll talk some more about the TV series. And, yeah, I look forward to, as this is progressing, um, doing, like, some panel discussions from time to time with people like yourself. Um, Count me in, we, my friend. we start getting more news coming out. It would be my very pleasure. I really enjoyed the platform and I enjoy talking about it. So, And I'm not running out of things to say. Well, and, and you have a lot of good things to say. Everybody um, has really enjoyed just getting your point of view and, and hearing you know where you're coming from with all this. And I think it shows in your, in your films. So I'll be looking forward to, to whatever you do next, whether it's another fan film or, or whatever your next project is. And, and we'll definitely be talking... Lots more um, yeah. here uh, as we move forward. Can't say for sure it's going to be a fan film, but I'm not done with filmmaking. And I have plenty of stories in my mind I want to say, I want to tell. So it's just the beginning. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I, I can't wait for it. And um, yeah, like I said, I can't thank you enough for hanging out with us this evening. Hey, dude, um, thank this you. Is, 
thank you for the chance for the opportunity you you really help out with with my work and to 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 put it up there so you thank me but i thank you and i thank you not only for this but for everything you do you spend a tremendous amount of time to entertain your community but to gather the newest information and to spread the love so no no thank you i mean that oh man well thank me Thank you again, um, and yeah, that means a lot coming from you, and, and I appreciate you. Um, and yeah, again, it's a it's a work of passion for us too. You know, my wife and I, we we put a lot of time and effort in everything we do, and it's because we love it. You know, just like you do, just like everybody hanging out in the live chat tonight does. So does she um, stick behind the scenes, or does she come on the show as well? Oh sometimes? yeah, she'll she'll right? come on yeah. sometimes. You know, cool. Um, um, not not nearly as much as me lately, but uh, she she yeah she'll she'll come on sometimes and um, people it's know her out when, to share. We, when we do get out uh, to events in person sometimes you know people know her out there and stuff and we'll come and um, see if we have a table sometimes. That's cool, man. It's a very nice passion to share with someone. Absolutely, cinema Absolutely. is something that really gather people together. Yes. Some of the best memories I have from my childhood is going to the movies with my buddies. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Well, it's it's a communal thing, you know, even if you watch the movie by yourself, you want to immediately go talk about it to somebody. And that's what a lot of the, you know, we do here is we're just talking about our, our favorite movies and stuff. So, yeah, nothing like geeking out. <laughs> I think that, yeah, I think that's that's what it's all about. So, Dominic, again, I'm going to let you go. This has been great, and um, I, I always hate saying goodbye, but every day is Halloween, so instead I'd like to just say see Happy you later. Halloween. Yeah, I'll see you. See you later. Yes, Until absolutely. next time, and Happy absolutely. Halloween, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have a good evening, sir. Um, and again, I can't thank you enough, and we will be in touch. And, uh, and yeah, everybody's sending you lots of pumpkins and hearts yeah take care everyone thank you as well huh? i thank you matt but thank you uh, to, to to your community for every kindness you sent tonight really really appreciate it. the next time i really need to have the face the the, the the youtube page open so i can follow those comments as well i didn't do that uh, tonight and i i feel uh i missed out a lot of stuff that's that's all right. Well, it'll it'll be up if you ever want to rewatch it. But but yeah, I need to work it out better so we can start getting it on here so you guys can can see what I'm seeing too. But yeah, uh, it's cool work, to interact. It's all a work in progress. It always is. But I I would really really love to interact a little bit more with uh, yeah. with the people present on the chat as well. So sorry for that. Uh, I I don't have the messages, so I couldn't really interact. But uh, thank you for relaying the love yes. and the the positive comments. So yeah, let's go. Time to time to go to sleep now. Already one a.m. here. That's right. Yep, it's it's hitting that for us too. So, all right, man. You have you have a good evening. You too. I'll see you soon. Definitely. Looking forward to it. All right. There we go. Huge thanks once again to Dominic for hanging out with us this evening. Um, like I said, Halloween Stocks 2 is out now. The link is in the description of this live stream if you haven't seen it yet. I definitely recommend it. I know you're going to love it. Um, thanks for hanging out, everybody, Andromeda. Um, good night. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for your super chat support. Um Yeah, it is, yeah, what, two and a half hours um, in tonight. Um, let's uh, let's do some shout-outs real quick, and then um, I am going to get out of here. Um, but we are going to be doing more stuff like this, like I said. just um, Not just the people that make the films. I mean, of course, we're going to have more of them on, and in fact, I'm interviewing somebody from one of the films uh, later on this week. Stay tuned. Look in the community tab for the announcement. But, um, you know, we want to bring on other people that are expressing their fandom in different ways. Um, you guys have suggested maybe getting some mask uh, artists on, some mask rehaulers from time to time. Um, and, and, and 
I look forward to doing that. I've, I was mentioned it to Dominic earlier today that maybe at some point we'll do a panel um, on fan films again, but a panel with other filmmakers too that have done their own fan films and stuff like that. So um, let me know what you think about that idea and if you enjoyed what you saw here tonight. All right, starting us off on shout outs real quick. Tonight over on Twitter is from Mark at Rip Hate. Happy Michael Myers Monday, folks. Every day is Halloween at our house and oil painting done by yours truly. And I thought this is just a really, really, really nice uh, looking piece of artwork. Great looking oil painting, actually. Jumping over to Instagram, this one posted today by our friend, the great James Jude Courtney, with uh, some of his Halloween homies at Harhound over the weekend. There he is with Virginia Gardner from Halloween 2018, and of course, that's Rowan Campbell from Halloween Ends. Good to see all of them. Also from Instagram, this was uh, shared today by Mr. Slaytastic. Reading the Taking Shape book. One more from Instagram this evening. This was posted by Kay Labrie. It says, only my child. Everyone was asking to take pictures with them at the convention, and they thought it was the coolest thing. And uh, here you see, speaking of Sue, there she is in the pumpkin dress right there. You can even see me over there. Um... This was at age 45, and you can see us over there uh, shooting, taking pictures. And uh, this is Minnie Myers, I guess. Uh, Minnie Myers' mom shared this today and tagged us in it. It's pretty awesome. And, uh, yeah, Minnie Myers was a huge hit there. Those of you that were there remember, but there's Sue um, ushering him over to the larger gathering of Myers. And one more for tonight. This one's from Threads, from our buddy at Keep It Creepy. Sharing this uh, moment of Allison with a happy Michael Myers Monday. Gotta love that. So there we go. That's this week's Michael Myers Monday shout-outs. Like I said, the poll, this week's poll is up um you will want to uh check that out and uh participate once we get out of here watch halloween stocks too if you haven't already um stay tuned for lots of exciting stuff coming to the channel this week um it's, it's something in the air i i've got another dominic Coming on for an exclusive interview, I can tell you about this one um, I recorded last week. It's going to drop um, in just a couple days here on the channel. This is with a filmmaker named Dominic O'Neill, and um, he's got a new Halloween horror movie called Haunted Ulster Live. It's an indie film. It's going to have its U.S. premiere at an upcoming festival, and... Um, it's uh, going to be released here in the States this summer. Um, it's a really cool film. I've seen it. And uh, my exclusive interview with Dominic O'Neill uh, is coming up this week as well. That's right. I didn't plan it that way to have two uh, Dominic interviews back-to-back uh, -back like this. It's just the way it worked out. Um, and while tonight's Dominic came to us all the way from uh, Quebec, Canada... Our next Dominic comes to us all the way from beautiful Ireland and talks to us about his um, Ireland set Halloween horror film. So um, you can look for that coming this week as well. Like I said, there's another interview I have scheduled for this week with a, uh, a certain person who played a certain iconic character in one of these films. That's all I'll tell you for now. Uh, look for the announcement of who coming very soon um at this point it's looking like we probably won't go live next week it's april 1st um but that might change again if some news breaks we definitely will um also we've got a lot of people i'm talking to about coming on here for some live discussions so um if it works out 
for some of their schedules, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to work around them on some of these weeks. So, um, that might be a factor too, but most likely probably won't be live next Monday. That doesn't mean we're not going to have new content. Lots of, um, cool new stuff coming your way here on the channel. You're not going to want to miss, but in two weeks, we will have Dave Farrick here live for Michael Myers Monday live joining me. Um, this has been a blast. This is our fourth and final Monday of March, what I've called Michael Myers March. And we had guests every week and it was awesome. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I appreciate all of you that hung out and watched and um, all of you that participated in the live chat as well. Um, uh, apologies if we didn't get to your questions, uh, but don't worry. We're going to keep doing this. Um, I can't promise we're going to have a guest here every week. In fact, I can promise there won't be a guest here every single week. There's still going to be plenty where it's just me. Um, so, uh, yeah, don't worry. I, I still need you to alter myself once in a while, too. Um, but I, I am going to um, have some more guests on here in the coming weeks. So stay tuned for all that and everything else we got coming your way right here on the HDN YouTube channel. Until then, I'm Matt Arts for Halloween Daily News. Thank all of you for hanging out tonight, for your comments in the live chat, for watching. You guys rock. This has been fun. Thanks, uh, thanks again to Dominic for hanging out and uh, giving us his time this evening. Like I said, we're definitely going to have him back on. Um, we're going to start doing some panel discussions here, have multiple guests at a time, and uh, really crank this party up. To the next notch as uh, we count down to this TV series and continue celebrating everything about this franchise. If you're watching on a replay, thank you too. Drop your comments down below. If you like what you saw here, hit the video with a like. Continue, consider becoming a channel member. It's just five dollars a month, and you get uh, our interviews and most of our pre recorded content, early access, and lots of other killer perks you can learn about in the membership tab. All right, guys, this has been awesome. Thank you again for hanging out. Everybody have a good evening, get some rest, and of course, happy Michael Myers Monday.